Today's adventure starts at the Great Elf Tree. Chickens ride west. <gasps> oh, my goodness! It's morning! I've got to do my deliveries. Relax, Mr Elf. It's early. Oh, yes. I love these quiet moments before the day begins. Yes, it's so lovely and peaceful. <laughs> ah, it's the cockerel from the elf farm. The chickens have escaped! We have to round them up. Come on, you chickens. Whoa! Come on, chickens. Come on, come on. Come on, chickens. Come on, choo-choo. Whoa, good. Everything's under control. Thanks for your help, Mr Elf. Lucky you were still here and not off on your deliveries. Oh, my deliveries! I really am late now. <laughs> Look at the little primroses. So pretty. <laughs> Good delivery. Morning, Mr Elf. You're a bit late today. Yes, we had a problem with the chickens this morning. Chickens, eh? That reminds me. I really fancy an egg for breakfast. Ah, I didn't bring an egg today. No egg? No problem. I'll just go and get one. Can I come along? Of course. I'd better come too so I can pick a good egg. We'll drive back to the chickens, pick up the egg, load it on the truck, drive back here, and hey, presto, you'll have your egg, Your Majesty. Oh, all that for one egg? It'd be simpler if I had my own chicken. Then I'd get an egg in time for breakfast. <laughs> OK. Bye. Bye. You don't really want a chicken, do you? Of course not. I was joking. <laughs> an egg! The king wants an egg! Does he? We might have a problem there. The chickens aren't laying any eggs. What? Why not? The chickens have run out of food. They've pecked away all the plants. Till all that's left is mud. Yes, if you want a nice flower garden, don't keep chickens. Look, there's one little flower left. Oh, they like eating little flowers the best. Hey, you cheeky chicken. If only there was somewhere else they could live. Oh, Daddy said he'd like chickens at the little castle. Yes, he did sort of say that. It's true. The king said, I want my own chicken. It's the perfect solution. We'll move the chickens to the little castle. OK, everyone, we're moving the chickens west. Saddle up, cowboys. Yahee! Boys, you're moving chickens. So shouldn't you be called chicken boys? Uh, cowboys sounds better. Can I be a cowgirl? Sure thing, Holly. Here's your hat. <laughs> Wagons roll. Yeehaw! Yahoo! Yahee! Yippee! -yay, okay! -yay. <laughs> I didn't realise moving chickens was so noisy. The chickens like noise, but we must be careful not to make a sudden loud noise. We don't want a stampede. Sudden loud noise? What, like bang? <laughs> ah, chicken on the loose! <laughs> Whoa! This way, this way! <laughs> Phew! That was close. Now, no more sudden loud noises, Nanny Plum. We've got a long journey ahead of us. Chickens ride west, chickens ride west. Wagons are a-rolling, west we are going. Chickens ride west, chickens ride west. We've reached Crooked Creek. What do you mean, Crooked Creek? It's a creek, isn't it? And it's crooked. It's just a little river. Somehow we have to get the chickens to the other side. And chickens don't like crossing water. <laughs> I thought chickens loved water. Have you ever seen a chicken in water? All the time. Swimming up and down, going quack, quack. Look, there's one. <laughs> That's a duck. <sighs> Whatever. Chickens are not ducks and they don't like swimming. Ooh. So what can we do? We'll use an old cowboy trick to get the chickens across. 
Wait here. What's the old cowboy trick? I don't know, but it's bound to be very clever. Or very silly. But probably funny. Ta-da! Told you, he's dressed as Humpty Dumpty. Why is old elf? Why are you dressed as an egg? Chickens like to look after their eggs. So, if they see one floating across the water, they'll follow it. I'm an egg. Come in, chickens. The water's lovely and warm. I'm an egg. They're following the egg. I'm an egg. I'm an egg. That has to be one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen. I'm an egg. I'm an egg. I'm an egg. I'm an egg. You see, it's all quite simple when you're an old cow hand like me. <gasps> oh, what's the matter? Haven't you ever seen a cowboy in his underpants before? Wow, the chickens really like pecking up flowers. They're eating machines, leaving nothing but mud. Yes, are you sure the king said he wants chickens at the little castle? That's what Daddy said. I want chickens at the little castle. Very well then, saddle up. Chickens ride west, chickens ride west. Wagons are a-rolling. We're in the Badlands. Badlands? It's the meadow. We'll stop here for the night. Get the wagons in a circle. Let's keep these chickens safe. Ah, sleeping outdoors with a campfire. Life doesn't get better than this. Unless you're home in bed, watching television. Talking of home, we'd better phone the king. Hello? Hello, King Thistle. We're almost there, but we need to camp out for the night. Wow! How long can it take to deliver one egg? Don't worry, Daddy. You'll have your chicken by the morning. My chicken? What does Holly mean by that? Bedtime, everybody. Nanny, you keep watch. What do I have to do? Keep watching the chickens and do not fall asleep. Righto! Morning, Nanny Plum. How did it go in the night time? Uh, fine. Where are the chickens? Oh, they've gone. Gone? The whole point of watching them was to make sure they didn't go. You never said that. You just said watch them. You watch them wander off into the night? Yes. Oh, all right, cowboys. Let's round up the chickens. Come back, chickens! Chickens, come back! Nanny, remember, no sudden loud noises. We don't want a chicken stampede. All right. You aren't exactly quiet yourself. Ha! Elves are good at being quiet. And, and we're, we're elves! elves. <laughs> Whoops. The chickens are stampeding! <laughs> We'll head them off at the pass. Head them off at the pass? What does that mean? No idea. But they say it in all the cowboy films. The chickens are heading straight for the fairy village. <laughs> ah, chicken stampede! <laughs> Which way did the chickens go? They went that away. Yes, that's what they say in cowboy films as well. They went that away. Ah, <sighs> it's so lovely to wake up to the song of a little bird. <laughs> Good grief! What are those chickens doing here? You said you wanted a chicken, Daddy. I didn't expect you to take me seriously. You're the king. Of course we take you seriously. What are they doing to my flower garden? Eating it, Your Majesty. If you are going to keep chickens, you have to say goodbye to flower gardens. But you can have eggs for breakfast every day. <laughs> And you won't have any problems waking up. <laughs> Hello, 
everybody. May I present my new boat, Bunty 2. Bunty 2? Yes. Do you remember my old boat, Bunty? Bunty was a lovely boat. Yes, Bunty was a lovely boat. Until she met Big Bad Barry. You all know what happened then. Barry ate Bunty. Yes, Barry has eaten every boat I've ever made. But now I've built Bunty 2. My best boat ever. Six bedrooms, three bathrooms, a kitchen, a sun lounge. The ideal boat for a cruise to a tropical paradise. A cruise to a tropical paradise? How wonderful! And Bunty 2 doesn't run on clockwork. She runs on batteries. So she's super fast. to stop Big Bad Barry eating this boat. Aha! I have a brilliant plan. What's the plan? Bunty 2 is never going in the water. Never going in the water? Yes. Barry is not going to eat Bunty 2. This is ridiculous. Why did you build a boat that you're not going to put in the water? Just for something to do. So we're not sailing to the tropical paradise? Nope. Oh, Dad! I thought we were all going on holiday. I've got a good idea. As your king, I command you to put Bunty 2 in the water and sail us to the tropical paradise. But what about Big Bad Barry? Don't worry. If Barry eats Bunty 2, I'll take full responsibility. What does that mean? You can blame it on me. The king is so wise. But, but... Good. That's sorted then. We're going on holiday. OK, but if we're going to do it, I'm in charge. And that means... Oh, this is an elf holiday, so no magic. <coughs> Yay! A holiday! Next stop, the ocean! Yes, but first we have to get past Barry. You worry too much, Mr Elf. Maybe Barry won't turn up. Oh, look! There's Barry! Ah! What do we do? What do we do? There's just one chance. Bunty 2 is super fast. It's working, Mr Elf. We're faster than Barry. We've left Barry really far behind. Good. He's given up. Hooray! Right, everybody. Let's sail to the tropics and swim among the corals. We're going on holiday, we're going on holiday. We're going on holiday to a tropical paradise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr Elf, it's lovely to see you so relaxed. Yes, with Barry far away, I'm actually enjoying this holiday. We're here, in the tropical ocean. Let's go diving. Cool. <laughs> Mrs Elf, are you coming diving? Um, no thanks. I need to catch up on some important reading. Right all. See you later. Chapter one. I was just a young servant girl, and Squire Trevelyan, with his dark, broody looks and mane of black hair, was being very grumpy. I didn't like him at all. This is the coral reef. Amazing! Yes, it's all so pretty. Do you think we'll bump into anyone else down here? In the middle of a vast ocean? We're not going to bump into anyone. Ah, watch where you're going. Oh, I'm most terribly sorry. I didn't see you there. Well, I am here, and I'm not pleased to be bumped into. Not pleased at all. It's Captain Squid, the pirate. Yes, it is I, Captain Squid, and I'm here burying my treasure. Burying your treasure? At the bottom of the ocean? The thing is, every place I bury my treasure, it gets found. So I thought, if I bury it at the bottom of the ocean, where no people ever visit, maybe, just maybe, my treasure might stay hidden. It's not too much to ask, is it? Well, we're very sorry to disturb you. We'll be on our way. Yes, be off with you. Get your own ocean to swim in. 
Uh, hang on a moment. There is uh, something you could help me with. What's that? It's a bit embarrassing, but uh, I haven't got a boat to sail home in. Can I have a lift? What happened to your boat? It got eaten by a big fish. Barry! Barry's here! The fish that ate my boat had big eyes. That's Barry. And a big mouth. That's Barry! And eight legs. That's not Barry. A fish with eight legs? Yes, it's a giant octopus and it's swimming towards your boat. Ah, I have to warn Mrs Elf. And then Squire Trevelyan said, Here is the great secret I must tell you. The person I truly love is... Yes, this had better be important. Yes, uh, don't panic, but there is something swimming towards you. Oh, yes, what sort of a something? Uh, a sort of hungry giant octopus with eight legs something. Oh, yes, I see it. What should I do? Would you mind telling it not to eat my boat? Now, listen here, Mr Octopus. This boat is not for eating. What's happening? The octopus seems to be eating your boat. Quick, to the surface! Naughty octopus! Stop eating! Stop at once, I say! <laughs> ah, my boat! Eaten! I said this would happen! No, you said your boat would be eaten by Big Bad Barry, but it was eaten by a giant octopus. It's a disaster! Don't worry. I said I'd take responsibility, and I will. And? That's it. I've taken responsibility. Fine. Well, I hate to ask, but Nanny Plum, can you magic a boat up so we can go home? No. Why not? Because you said blah, 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 no magic, and you took my wand away, remember? Oh, yes. So I did. So, we're stranded here. No, I've just had a brilliant Mr Elf idea. I'll build a raft out of the wreckage. And we'll help you. Yes, Dad. We'll lash the pieces together with rope. There, finished. May I present Bunty 3? What's Bunty 3? This boat. Bunty 2 was prettier. It's not meant to be pretty. It's a raft. I know what a raft is. Where's the bathroom? Is it downstairs? Ah, there isn't a downstairs. Don't be too harsh on Nanny. She doesn't know as much about rafts as us sailors. By the way, where's the kitchen? Is that downstairs too? Yes, it's probably next to the sitting room. This is a raft. There aren't sitting rooms and kitchens and bathrooms. It's not very luxurious then, is it? No, it's not, but it will get us home. And so, Squire Trevelyan turned out to be nice after all, and I married him. The end. My goodness! That was a surprise ending. Land ahoy! We're home! Yes, but that means we're near to Big Bad Barry. Stop worrying, Mr Elf. Barry might not turn up. Oh, look! There's Barry! Oh, he's been waiting for us all this time. How sweet. He's going to eat Bunty 3. Yum, yum. Ah! Abandoned ship! Abandoned ship! Don't worry, everyone. Whatever happens, I will take full responsibility. That makes everything all right, then. My boat is gone. Gone into Barry's tummy. Curse you, Big Bad Barry. You'll never eat another boat of mine. Never. Never. Because I'm not going to build a boat ever again. I think you've upset Barry, Mr Elf. Look at his sad little face. <laughs> he is crying. I've never seen a fish cry. You shouldn't be so unkind to Barry. What? Yes, Barry doesn't mean any harm. Doesn't mean any harm? Mr Elf, as your king, I command you to build another boat for Barry. Eh? What sort of boat would you like, Barry? A sailing boat? Yum, yum. A sailing boat for Barry, please, Mr Elf. King Thistle is so wise. Yes, we are very lucky. Today's adventure starts at Mrs Witch's house.
The Witch Competition. Thank you for helping tidy my house, Nanny Plum. No problem, Mrs Witch. My goodness, what a lot of cobwebs. Let's magic them away. Lovely. I don't know what I'd do without you, Nanny. But, Mrs Witch, why can't you just use your own magic to tidy your house? The thing is, I don't do much magic these days. I'm retired. Meow. Still got your mangy old cat, I see. Don't be rude about Moggy. I say cat, but it's just a bag of fleas, really. Leave him alone. I'm warning you. And he's smelly. <laughs> <gasps> Mrs Witch, you've turned Nanny to stone, so you can do magic. Only if I'm cross. Nanny was being very rude about my cat. Can you turn Nanny back? If she says sorry. Sorry. And say mm. sorry to Moggy. Sorry, Moggy. <laughs> Oof! I forgot she's so touchy about her cat. Hello, are you Mrs Witch? That's me. I'm Wendy Witch. Hello, Wendy Witch. I'm so excited to be standing here with you. You're famous. Am I? I was brought up on stories of you doing the fastest spells in the West. That was all a long time ago. I'm retired now. And what a lovely witchy house. I can't believe I'll be living here. Uh, what was that? I'll be living in your house. But there's only room in this house for one witch. Yes. Now you're retired, you'll be going to the old witch's home. You'll be very happy there. It's full of other old witches watching telly all day. Uh, you know, when I said I was retired, I meant I'm not retired. Goodbye. <laughs> that was close. Um, sorry to bother you again, but since there's only room for one witch around here, we'll have a witch competition. The winner stays, the loser goes. Oh, yes, of course. A witch competition needs a judge. Someone important. Uh, my daddy is a king. Is that important enough? A king will do nicely. Let's go and meet this daddy of yours. Hello, Your Majesty. Ah! I'm Wendy Witch. Oh, hello, Wendy Witch. We're having a witch competition and we need someone important and wise to be the judge. That'll be me. I'm very important and wise. If Mrs Witch loses, she'll have to leave her house. Daddy, you have to make sure Mrs Witch wins. I'm sorry, Holly, but I'm the judge and I have to be fair and above board. I suppose there's a first time for everything. When does the competition start? At high noon. I haven't got a chance against Wendy Witch. I haven't been in a witch competition for years. What happens in a witch competition? There's a spell contest, broomstick riding and jam making. Well, your jam smells quite nice. See, I've lost my touch. Which jam is supposed to be horrible? Don't worry, we'll help you make it horrible. <laughs> what if you put in some snail slime? Snail slime? Yes, that could do it. And some worm poo? Yes, that would make it taste awful. You see, you can win. Now let's tackle the broomstick riding. I haven't ridden my broom in years. It's forgotten all its training. <laughs> yeah, boy. Good broom. Oh, come here, you silly old stick. <laughs> oh, dear. Let's try spells. Mrs Witch, you did the fastest spells in the West. Right, Mrs Witch. Turn these cans into frogs. <laughs> I'm trying. But I can't do it. I'm afraid she's past it. Past it? She can't even turn a can into a frog. She might have been good at magic once, but now she's a bit of a has-been. Has-been? I'll show you. <gasps> Mrs Witch, you turned Nanny into a frog. That's because Nanny got me annoyed. <laughs> Oof. 
If you can do magic like that in the competition, you'll be fine. So just remember to get cross with Wendy Witch. But she's so friendly and nice. It's your only chance to win. OK, I'll try to be cross. It's high noon. Let the witch competition begin. First, jam making. Why are they all staring at me? You're the judge, darling. They're waiting for you to taste the witch's jam. Oh, what's in it? Slug, mostly, with a hint of bat and spider eggs for crunch. Ew! That's the most disgusting thing I've ever tasted. Thank you. No, my jam, Your Majesty. Yes. Um, why should I have all the fun? Isn't it someone else's go? Daddy, you're the judge, so you must taste both jams. Of course I must. Lucky me. Oh, they both taste equally revolting. So, the jam making is a draw. Hooray! And now, broomstick flying. Yeehaw! That was really good. Ooh. Now it's Mrs. Witch's turn. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Right, she's held on. Yeehaw! She's riding the broom. The broomstick riding a draw. Now for the spell contest. Mrs. Witch, where are you going? To the old witch's home. I can't win a spell contest. Yes, you can. You turned Nanny to stone. And you turned her into a frog. Well, Nanny Plum makes me so cross. Just remember to be cross with Wendy Witch. But she's so polite and charming. She wants to put you in the old witch's home. And live in your house. You're right. Remember I'm cross. Remember I'm cross. Let the, Let the spells, spells begin. begin. The witch, the that, witch turns that turns the other, the other to, to stone, stone is the is winner. The winner. <laughs> Remember I'm cross. Remember, I'm cross. Mrs. Witch, it's been such a thrill to be in a competition with you. Remember, I'm... Oh, thank you, dear. You're so nice. <gasps> She's turned Mrs. Witch to stone. That's it. I've won. I'll be the Little Kingdom's witch. I'll really enjoy working with you, King Thistle. Uh, working with me? Oh, yes. I've got big plans for the Little Kingdom. Oh, dear. She sounds like a bit of a bossy boots. Meow. And Mrs Witch's mangy old cat will have to go. Did you see Mrs Witch move? She can't move. She's been turned to stone. He really is a flea-bitten old thing. Oh. He smells awful. Oh. I'm really cross. You leave my moggy alone. Wow, Mrs. Witch turned the other witch to stone. So, I suppose Mrs. Witch is the winner. We knew you could do it. Uh, shouldn't you turn Wendy Witch back now? She was very rude about my Moggy. But if she says sorry... Sorry. And sorry to Moggy. Sorry, Moggy. <sighs> Thanks. You're just amazing, Mrs Witch. I've never seen anyone break out of a stone spell before. And you're a very polite and clever young witch, mostly. Well, as they say, this town ain't big enough for the both of us. So I'll be moving along. Bye! I'm glad Mrs Witch won. The Little Kingdom wouldn't be the same without Mrs Witch. Yes. Mind you, Wendy Witch did have a point about the cat. It does rather smell and it's... What was that? It, uh, is a most lovely pussycat. Thank you, King Thistle. I do love my Moggy. Meow. Hello, Mrs 
Fothering Gill, have you come to teach Daisy and Poppy? Yes, Nanny Plum. And this time, I am not going to let Daisy and Poppy get the better of me. That's the spirit. She's doomed. My dolly. Mrs. Fotheringill is here to give the twins their lesson. Are you sure you really want to do that, Mrs. Fotheringill? We'd quite understand if you... Oh, no, I have thought long and hard about it. And what happened last time was not the twins' fault. It was my fault. But the twins zap you to the South Pole. Only because I didn't give the little darlings enough trust. If you trust a child, they will repay your trust. <laughs> now, Daisy and Poppy, let's start this lesson as we mean to go on. <laughs> let's just open our picture books and... <laughs> what are they doing to her up there? The last time she taught the twins, they made her disappear. All they found was her shoe. Disappear! Now, Daisy, I know that deep down you're good and you'd never make me disappear. Disappear! <laughs> ah, good. They've gone quiet. Quiet isn't good. It means they're up to something. I hope Mrs. Fotheringill is all right. <gasps> all that's left of her is her shoes. <laughs> Daisy, Poppy, where is Mrs. Fotheringill? Gone. All gone. Gone? My goodness. The twins are so wild and naughty. Where do they get it from? Grandpapa Thistle is here. There's your answer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Dad. Grandpapa. <laughs> Hello, my dears. I was just passing and I asked myself, why don't I take my grandchildren for a day out? Hooray! Hang on, Dad. Where were you thinking of taking the children? I thought we'd visit a volcano. Um, I don't think climbing up a volcano is such a good idea. We're not going to climb up it. Oh, good. We're climbing down inside it. What? You can't take children into a volcano. It's too dangerous. Is it? All right, then. How about lion taming? No. What's wrong with a nice walk in the meadow? I bet the twins would like to go down a volcano. Yes, Grandpa Papa. Papa. The twins are in disgrace today. They have been very, very naughty. Ah, what have the little darlings done? They've only made their teacher disappear. Oh, that nice Mrs. Fotheringill. Gone. All gone. Daisy, Poppy, where have you sent your teacher? Down. Down to the kitchen. Down, down. Down to the cellar. Very down. You know what? I think Daisy and Poppy have sent Mrs. Fotheringill to the centre of the earth. Centre of the <laughs> We have to rescue her. Well, that's settled where we're going for our day out then. To the centre of the earth. <laughs> I saw the film of Journey to the Centre of the Earth. There were dinosaurs and lost tribes and everything. Dinosaurs? In the centre of the Earth? What nonsense. It's true. I saw it on the telly. How do we get to the centre of the Earth? We could just take the stairs. Stairs? Yes. There are secret stairs in the little castle that go down, down, down. Ooh. The stairs start from a secret entrance in the kitchen. We just have to press this large button. Oh, I've always wondered what that button was for. I built these stairs when I built the little castle. I asked myself, why have stairs only to the cellar? Why not to the centre of the earth? You're a bit crazy, aren't you? I'm not crazy. I'm completely bonkers. Look, there's some writing on the wall. It's runic writing written by dwarves. What does it say? Nanny, can you translate it? Hmm, 
It says, take these stairs down to the centre of the Earth. At the bottom, you'll see dinosaurs. Does it really say dinosaurs? No, I made that bit up. But there will be dinosaurs. You'll see. <sighs> No, Holly. We have to go past the roots of the plants, the drains, the giant spider caves. It's a long way to the center of the Earth. So how many steps do we have to go down? 48 million trillion thousand. Oh, no. My feet are tired already. That's why I got the dwarves to put a lift in. Doors opening. Hold tight, everyone. The lift does go rather fast. Doors closing. Going down. Whoa! Oh, my tummy! This is fun! Brilliant! Centre of the Earth. Doors opening. Here we are, the centre of the Earth. It's a huge cave. It's full of trees and giant mushrooms. Yep, that's how it was on telly. Well, one thing that's not here, dinosaurs. <laughs> There's one. Oh. See? The telly is always right. But now that we're here, how do we find Mrs Fotheringill? Gaston can sniff Mrs Fotheringill's shoes and find her. Brilliant, Ben. <laughs> Find Mrs. Fotheringill. <laughs> Good boy, Gaston. <laughs> I wonder where we'll find the Lost Tribe. Lost Tribe? What nonsense. Whoa, look at that. A Lost Tribe. Told you. They're elves and fairies, just like us. Halt. Who journeys through our land? We come from the surface of the mighty Earth. We welcome you, surface dwellers. We thank you, O oh Lord of the Underground. Nanny, why are they speaking in that funny way? That's how they speak on telly. We bid you greetings. Uh, actually, we've come to get Mrs Fotheringill. Ah, the one we call Teacher. Yes, that'll be her. Good morning, children. My name is Mrs Fotheringill. Hello, Mrs Fotheringill. Oh! Hello, everybody. We're here to rescue you. And we've brought your shoes. Oh, my shoes. It's good to have them back. It's been very nice and peaceful down here. A bit like a holiday. But I will be glad to be back in my own little home. Father Gil! Father Gil! Ah, Daisy! Poppy! Ah, on the other hand, I think I'll stay here. Young lady, do you want to be rescued or not? Oh, I don't know. It's so hard to decide. I'll make it easy for you. Yes? As queen, I command you to come back. Oh, well, in that case... Right. Mission accomplished. Let's go home. Back to the lift, everyone. Oh, no. Not that horrid lift again. My poor tummy. There is another way up. We can go by balloon. <laughs> Just need a basket. Abracadabra. All aboard. Goodbye, people of the underground. We bid you farewell, surface dwellers. See ya. Oh, floating gently up in a balloon sounds lovely and relaxing. It certainly will be lovely and relaxing. If you can call hurtling through a volcano relaxing... Volcano? Of course! The volcano will take us straight up to the surface. Dad, I said no volcanoes! Oh, we'll be fine, as long as the volcano doesn't erupt. Whoops! Seems to be erupting. Oh, well, here we go. Next stop, the little castle. Now, Daisy and Poppy, say sorry to Mrs Fotheringill for causing her so much trouble. Sorry! And do you promise to be good next time I teach you? We promise. Oh, they are sweet, really, aren't they? She never learns. She's doomed. <laughs>
Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's playgroup outing. Uh, Mrs. Fotheringill, are you sure it's a good idea taking the toddlers on an outing? They can be quite a handful. <laughs> <laughs> the little darlings do have high spirits, but this time I'm not going to let them get the better of me. That's their spirit, Mrs. Fotheringill. She's doomed. Let's check all the toddlers are here. Daisy and Poppy. <laughs> uh, Daisy and Poppy have promised to be as good as gold today. Not that that means very much. I'm sure if Daisy and Poppy say they will be good, they will be. Good as gold! <laughs> nettle Elf? Ouch! She stung Mrs. Fotheringill with her nettle. Raspberry Fairy? <laughs> My little sister. Even her wand is rude. <laughs> oh, and last but not least, Tarquin. <laughs> Tarquin like Fodigil. Tarquin is a monster. Remember last time when the toddlers made Mrs. Fotheringill disappear? Yes. All they found was her shoes. <laughs> Now, for today's outing, we're going on a trip to the museum. The big museum? But that's full of big people. Yes, but the museum has so many interesting things for the toddlers to look at. Are you going to take away their wands, Mrs. Fotheringill? No, Holly. If you trust a child, they will repay your trust. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a catastrophe. What's a catastrophe, Daddy? What this is going to be. Oh, look! Here comes the magic bus. All aboard! Come on, everyone. Hold tight. Going up. Next up, the big museum. Now, as you know, there will be big people at the museum. And we don't want to be seen by big people, do we? No! So what should you do if a big person sees you? Turn them into a frog. No, no, no. If a big person sees you, just pretend to be a toy, like this. I'm a toy. I'm a toy. Last stop, big museum. Everybody off. Oh. Oh. Keep together. In we go. Wow, these stairs are big. Well, this museum is built for big people. Follow me, everyone, and try not to be seen. Ah! Whoa! Look, Mum, a tiny little person. I'm a toy! I'm a toy! It's a toy. Some poor child must have lost it. Just put it over there so they can find it again. OK, Mum. Phew! That was close. Yes, Ben, but it shows the plan works. If you're seen, just pretend to be a toy. I still think turning them into frogs is simpler. In the big museum, we can get an idea of how wonderful it was in the past. This first room is about the Stone Age. Ooh. A long time ago, the big people lived in caves. These are models of how the cave people must have looked. There's a button to press. Did the cave people have electric light bulbs? No. That's to show how the campfire would have looked when it was lit. Here's another button. <laughs> they move. Ooh. You see, King Thistle? The toddlers are being as good as gold. Good as gold. <laughs> it's actually going quite well. The toddlers haven't even made Mrs. Fotheringill disappear yet. Stone Age times. Close your eyes and imagine what it must have been like. <laughs> I have always wanted to know what it would be like to live in the Stone Age. Abracadabra! <laughs> oh, dear. I suppose it was never going to last. All they've left is her shoes. Daisy, Poppy, where have you sent Mrs. Fotheringill? Stone, Stone Age! Age. <gasps> They've sent Mrs. Fotheringill back to the Stone Age. That was a very naughty thing to do. Bring Mrs. Fotheringill back right now. <sighs> OK. Oh! On second thoughts, you don't want to know what it was like to live in the Stone Age. Oh, my shoes! It's good to have them back. Right. Next room, 
ancient Egypt. Ooh. Look, here is a model showing how a pyramid was built. It's quite small. Were the ancient Egyptians the size of elves and fairies? No, the ancient Egyptians were big people. And the pyramids are huge. But they wouldn't be able to fit a full-sized pyramid into the museum. Big. That's right, Daisy. Think how big a real pyramid would be. Here we go again. Use your imagination. Big. Ah, oh, no! Stop! Stop it! My turn. What's going on here? Big people are coming. What's in there? Everyone, pretend to be toys. And what are these little toys doing here? Hello. Uh, hello? Frog time. <laughs> well done, Tarquin. Like they always say, when things are not going quite right, turn them into a frog. That doesn't even rhyme. And turning people into frogs is not a good way to do things. Why not? He'll turn back to a person in a moment and he won't remember a thing. we better get out of here before he turns back again. Yes, on with the tour. Oh, my goodness, that was all a bit of an adventure. What we need now is something a little less dangerous. Next room, the Vikings. Less dangerous? Vikings? People think the Vikings just ran around shouting. But really, they were gentle people who farmed and played music. If only there were Vikings around today, I'd love to know what they'd say to us. <laughs> she never learns. Abwakadabwa. <laughs> Interesting fact about Vikings, all they ate was Spam. I don't think that is correct. It's true! Vikings ate Spam. It was on the telly. Uh, Nanny, what happens when the frogs turn back into Vikings? They'll be very confused and maybe a tiny bit annoyed. Right, let's make sure we're not around when that happens. Wow, look at all those frogs. And what's this? Sorry about this, but I'm going to have to turn you all into frogs. Just for a bit. Eh? Frog time! Nanny, why are there still bangs going on in the other rooms? Well, it was going to happen at some point anyway, so I thought I'd save a bit of time and just turn the whole lot of them into frogs. All the big people in the museum? You've turned them all into frogs? That's right. I knew you'd be pleased. Oh, what happened? Where am I? It's the museum man. He's turned back to himself again. Yes, and he's confused and a little bit annoyed. Ah! Oh, no! Ah! All the Vikings are turning back too. Right. I think this is as good a time as any to leave. Let's get out. Stop the Little Kingdom! Last stop! Everybody off! Oh! Well, all in all, that didn't go too badly. We survived and the museum wasn't destroyed. <laughs> Good girl! You see? All you have to do is trust the little darlings and they will repay your trust. She's really in a world of her own. She never learns. And next time, I thought we could visit a... Next time? Yes, we'll visit a big castle. You know, I've always wanted to live in the times of knights in armour. Abracadabra! Yeah! <laughs> <sighs> Let's bring her back. Abracadabra. On second thoughts, I never want to live in the time of knights in armour. I think the safest, nicest time is right here and now. <laughs> Look!
Look what's come in the post. What a fancy envelope. It looks very posh. Let's see who it's from. Dear King and Queen Thistle, I have decided to come and visit your little kingdom today. I'll be arriving at dinner time. Yours sincerely, King Leopold. King Leopold? Yes. Never heard of him. He's heard of you, Daddy. Just think, a king. I'm a king. No, but a proper one. We must give him a royal welcome. He's a VIP. What's a VIP? A very important person. I'm a very important person. What is everyone getting so excited about? Have you heard the news? A king is coming to visit. It's written down in writing. Brilliant, isn't it? A real king. I'm a real king. It's so exciting that a very important person is coming. I want to tell everyone. I want to tell the marigolds. Hello. Hello. Queen Thistle here. Oh, my little sister. How are you? I'm fine. I just thought you'd like to know that we have King Leopold visiting today. Who's King Leopold? A very important person. A VIP? Oh, my goodness. A VIP? Our castle's bigger. Why can't the VIP come here? No, thank you. King Leopold wants to visit us. Oh. But maybe you could come and meet him too. Oh, yes, please. We're having a party in his honour tonight. We'll be there. Bye. Usually the marigolds laugh and laugh and laugh at us, but this time we'll be different. <laughs> We've got King Leopold coming to visit. We must start preparing. We'll have to make lots of lovely food. I'll start cooking straight away. We'll need a red carpet and the little children can wave flags to welcome King Leopold. And we'll have beautiful music. Now, children, everyone pick an instrument. Ben, you can play the spal throttle. OK. I've got the thump warbler. <coughs> and I've got the trimpy trumpy. <coughs> I think I'll have the fairy harp. Ah! Magic instruments! It is meant to be an elf and fairy band. And we fairies always use magical instruments. Oh, very well. Just a little magic, then. OK. Here's the magic piano. Hello, I'm a magic piano. I sing and I talk and I play. Ah! Too much magic. The wise old elf doesn't like magic. Ah, oh, sorry. I'm not a magic piano. I'm just a normal piano. I don't talk, really. My turn. A magic triangle. I can't bear to look. Oh, a pretty triangle. What's magical about that? Just don't ask it for free wishes. <laughs> ah! Would it be OK if we played some rock and roll? Rock and roll? Certainly not. We're playing for King Leopold, remember? OK. It was just a thought. Now, let's make music. Good work, everybody. It's looking great. Where's the food? Nanny Plum! There you go. I've made spaghetti vongole a la truffles. Yum, yum! This food looks delicious. Better than the usual stodge you make me. That's because King Leopold is coming to dinner. <sighs> Have all the little children got their flags to wave? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't they do that for me? Because... I know, I know. I'm not King Leopold. And we need music. Where's the band? Here we are. We've been practising all afternoon. Oh, good. It's nearly time. Everybody into their seats. I can hear footsteps. Someone's coming. Hooray! Here he comes. Let's start the music. Hello there. 
Noel. Get out of the way. We're waiting for a very important person. Oh, yes? Who's that, then? King Leopold. That's me. <gasps> you? You're King Leopold? Are you an actual king? Oh, yes. Where's your crown? I keep it under me hat. <laughs> But why have you never told us before? Oh, I don't like to go on about it. Don't like to go on about it? You sent us this flowery letter asking for a feast. Yes. Well, if I just drop in, I find people usually send me away. But if I send a letter as King Leopold, I get a bit more of a welcome and a dinner. It works the first time anyway. Can I have this pie? Uh, yes, I suppose so. <laughs> Very nice. I know a fact about pies. Do you want to hear it? No. no. I'll take that as a yes. Pies are never found in the wild. They have to be made by someone. <laughs> <sighs> All that... Effort and King Leopold oh turns out to be the gnome. Yes, mm. it's an outrage. <laughs> oh, he's still a king. And you've all been making such a fuss about a very important person coming. Daddy is right. Yes, we should still welcome King Leopold. Especially after all our practice. Let's enjoy ourselves. We've got a party with music and lovely food. Yes, I suppose things haven't worked out too badly. King and Queen Marigold are here. Oh! oh, no more pies. What's this? It's spaghetti vongole. OK, I'll give it a go. What will the marigolds say when they see that? <laughs> They'll laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and... Here we are, darling. Where is King Leopold? Uh, well, he's there. There? <laughs> he's that Nerm King. Look, he doesn't even wear a crown. Oh, I keep it under me hat. How humble he is. How modern. Oh, I feel positively overdressed. Me too. From now on, I'm going to wear a sack. Can we do the song now? Oh, yes. Uh, <clears throat> King Leopold, may I present the Elf and Fairy Band? Lovely. Excuse me for interrupting, but I couldn't help noticing you've got a magic piano. Hello there. And no offence, but that fancy whiffy waffy music is a waste of a good magic piano. Do you know any rock and roll? Rock and roll's my middle name! Wise old elf, do you like rock and roll? Rock and roll? I most certainly do not like rock and roll. I'll take that as a yes. Over to you, Mr. Piano. A bee bop a doo da a doo da do. I must bump your boos and wiggle your woo-ahs. Thank you very much. Oh, -hoo, that was fun. I'm going to enjoy staying here. Oh, dear. We're stuck with him for weeks now. This gnome king is incredible. If only King Leopold would come and stay with us at our castle. I don't see why not. Just mention pies, and he's all yours. I say, old boy, would you like to stay with us for a few weeks? There will be pies. <laughs> oh, if there's pies involved, I'll stay with you forever. A bee bop a doo da a doo da do. Are you looking forward to your first day at Fox Cubs, Ben? Yes, Dad. I loved being a fox cub when I was your age. I've still got my hat. 
In my day, it was Old Grey Wolf in charge. They've got a new leader now. I wonder who it is. Welcome to Fox Cubs, everybody. I'm the new leader. Hello, Hello Nanny, Nanny Plum. Plum. Don't call me Nanny Plum. I'm Fluffy Owl, to wit to woo. Hello, Fluffy Owl, to wit to woo. <coughs> Hi, Holly. Hi, Ben. <coughs> Hello, Nanny Plum. What are you doing here? I'm the new Fox Cub leader. You have to call me Fluffy Owl, to wit to woo. Oh, hello, Fluffy Owl. You have to say the Tawit Tawoo bit as well. Tawit Tawoo. You're just in time for the badges. Oh, is someone getting a badge? Ben, you're going to have so much fun getting your badges. Dad, what badges did you get when you were a fox cub? I got an adventure badge, a sailing badge and a knots badge. A knots badge? Yes. After days and days of tying knot after knot, I finally got my knots badge. It was hard work, but worth it. Who wants a badge? Eh? Everyone step forward and tell me what badge you'd like. You first, Rosie. Can I? Please. One adventure badge. But, but... Can I have a sailing badge? Of course. One sailing badge. Strawberry, what would you like? A knots badge, please. Here you go. Stop it. Stop it at once. You don't just hand out badges. Why not? You have to earn your badges. To get my adventure badge, I had to spend three days camping in the wild. Well, I watched a whole night of TV for my watching TV badge. Watching TV badge? That's not what the fox cubs are about. The fox cubs are about having adventures in the wild. Adventures do sound like fun. We like adventures. Mr Elf, can we have an adventure in the wild? Well, it's not up to me. It's up to Fluffy Owl. Oh, very well. Follow me, everyone. OK, here we are, having an adventure. What do we do? Well, imagine we had to look for food. How do we find food here? Fluffy Owl, why don't you show the children how to find food in the wild? All right. This way, everyone. Now they'll see. It's not easy to find food in the wild. Hiya! We found food. Ice cream! Ice cream? Yes, from the ice cream van over there. But that's cheating! Look, you said find some food, so we did. Now you're changing the rules. We got you a raspberry ripple, Mr Elf. OK, moving on from finding food. Does anybody know how to make a shelter? Oh, me! Me! I brought my tent. Watch this. There we go. Ooh. It's got five bedrooms, a bathroom, a television and even a cellar. Oh, it's amazing. The best tent in the world. We can't sleep in that. Why not? What's wrong with being comfortable when you're on holiday? This is an adventure, not a holiday. We'll make a shelter out of two twigs and a leaf. You lean the twigs up like this and... Hey, Presto, what have you got? Two twigs and a leaf. Where's the bed? You sleep on the ground. It's nature's bed. Lovely and cosy. But why bother when you can sleep in my castle tent? You're missing the point. Do you fox cubs want a real adventure? Yes! Good. If you're going to learn how to survive in the wild, you have to be in the wild. Like, uh, at the top of a mountain. What? Fluffy Owl, please magic us to the top of a mountain. OK. Abracadabra. Wow, we're at the top of a real mountain. Fantastic. Now, how are we going to get home? Easy. I'll magic us home. Let's say you don't have your wand with you. OK, I'll call for help. No phone either. Hello, hello. But that's going to make it very, very difficult to get home. Exactly. But when you get home, you will have earned your adventure badge. So, what do we do first? Maybe we should start by working out which mountain we're on. Good, Ben. That's exactly what we should do. Fluffy Owl, which mountain did you magic us to? 
No idea. What? You just said a mountain. I don't know one mountain from another. Well, that makes things a bit tricky. Why? Because we don't even know what country we're in. Oh. Perhaps you should magic us back home and we'll start again. I can't. You threw my wand down the mountain. Oh, yes. Let's ring for help. But you threw Fluffy Owl's phone down the mountain too. Oh, yes. So I did. You wanted us to be lost. Now we're lost. Happy now? I'm sure Mr Elf wouldn't have sent us to the top of a mountain if he didn't know how to get us home. Thank you, Strawberry. OK, I think I can work out where we are by using my compass. Let's see. North is that way and the position of the sun is... Oh, my goodness! We're on Everest! What's that, then? Mount Everest! The tallest mountain in the whole world! Is Mount Everest far from home, Dad? A bit far from home, Ben, yes. And is it really very high? A bit high? Yes, Holly. I suppose we could just climb down. Just climb down? Just climb down Everest, the enormous, treacherous mountain of rock and ice, perilous cliff after perilous cliff that could only be conquered by the world's greatest mountaineers? So, Mount Everest is not safe for children to climb down? No, Mount Everest isn't child-friendly. So what do we do now, Mr Einstein? I don't know. Oh, if only we had my castle tent. <sighs> What good would that do? We could watch TV. Could a fairy fly for hell? In that wind, you'd be blown away. No, what we need is someone who can climb down the mountain and fetch help. I know. Gaston is good at climbing. <coughs> good idea, Ben. Go, Gaston, go. Get help. <coughs> it may be some time before Gaston returns. After climbing down the mountain, he will have to journey through the jungle, cross the desert, swim the ocean before he arrives at the little kingdom. Hello, Gaston. <coughs> What's that? All the children and Fluffy Owl and Mr Elf all trapped at the top of a mountain, you say? <coughs> then this is a job for Old Grey Wolf. Ow! Lead the way, Gaston. Is this mountain far? Still further? Oh, are we nearly there? So, quite a way then. Gaston's been gone for ages. I hope he's all right. Gaston! And he's brought Old Grey Wolf. Oh, I'm very pleased to see you, Old Grey Donkey. It's Old Grey Wolf, and you have to say, Awoo! OK, Awoo! What's your plan, Old Grey Wolf? Awoo! Uh -oh. Have you brought the elf helicopter to lift us to safety? Or a team of mountain rescue elves to carry us down the mountain? Uh, actually, I, I set off in, in a bit of a hurry and you were a bit further away than I expected. So, you're just here on your own without a plan of any sort? Uh, yes. That's about it. Maybe you should do a bit of a magic? I'd love to. But he threw my wand away. So that's why I found it at the bottom of the mountain. Oh, it's good to have you back again. So, if you wouldn't mind um, magicking us back home? No problemo. Hooray! That was a really good adventure. Thank you, Fluffy Owl. Twit twoo. Well, you should thank Mr Elf. It was his idea. Thank you, Mr Elf. Yes, Dad. It was great. Ho, ho. And I think all of you fox cubs have earned your adventure badges. Indeed. Adventure badges for everyone. Thank, Thank you, Old Grey Wolf. Wow. And for fetching help in the fox cubs' hour of need, one of you has earned the rescue badge. Gaston, of course. <laughs> Gaston to the rescue! Oh. <laughs> it's fun playing cards with you.
with you, Ben and Holly. Yes, we love coming to your house. It's my birthday soon and you can come to my party. That sounds brilliant. You could have a fairy party. Or an elf party. Yes, an elf and fairy party. And all my friends can come dressed up. I could do some party magic. Ooh, yes, please. Lucy, lunchtime. Better hide. Dad can be a bit funny about you two. Mum, Dad, I've decided to have an elf and fairy party for my birthday. That's nice, Lucy. And I've invited Ben Elf and Fairy Princess Holly. Now, Lucy, we've been through this. Elves and fairies aren't really real. Hello, Lucy's dad. <laughs> Hello there. We are real. Uh, but, but we can't have real elves and fairies at Lucy's birthday party. Why not, Dad? There'll be lots of other children, and they're not used to seeing real elves and fairies. We understand. Yes. See you later, Lucy. Bye. Bye. Holly was going to do some magic at my party. Well, I can do some magic tricks. Watch, here's a coin. Now it's gone. Oh, what's this behind your ear? Oh, will you do a magic show at my party? Of course I will. Hi, Ben. Hi, Holly. Hi, everyone. Lucy's having an elf and fairy party. Great! I've always wanted to go to a big kid's party. Me too. What shall we wear? What we always wear. After all, we are elves and fairies. <laughs> The thing, real elves and fairies aren't invited. It's just a lot of big children dressed up as elves and fairies. Oh. 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 Lucy, what's the matter? Oh, Mum, I really wanted Ben and Holly to come to my party. Well, I think they can. Just keep them out of sight and away from your dad. Great! Thanks, Mum. I'll go and tell them. As long as it's only Ben and Holly. Ben! Holly! Mum says you can come to the party after all. Hooray! Hooray. Thanks, Thanks, Lucy. Lucy. We can do magic. And play party games. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, it was only supposed to be Ben and Holly. So, you don't want us to come? Of course I do. You can all come. I'm sure it will be fine. Hooray! As long as you promise to stay out of sight and away from my dad. We, we promise. promise. Let's put your wings on. <laughs> now you look like a real fairy princess. Lucy, all your friends are here. Oh, goody. Happy birthday, Lucy. <laughs> I like your fairy wings. I like your elf ears. I made them myself. <laughs> Here's a balloon each. Hold tight or they'll fly away. <laughs> Have fun. I'll be back to pick you up after the party. <laughs> I think the coast is clear. Have fun. I'll be back to pick you up after the party. Hello! My goodness, you've all come. Um, welcome. Here's a balloon. Hold on tight or it'll fly away. Whoa! Quick, grab him! Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> Look at all the lovely party food. Ooh! There's the birthday cake. <laughs> Gaston's gonna eat the cake. No, Gaston. Bad ladybird. <laughs> That's for later. Come on, everyone. Party time! <laughs> Let's get started with a bit of a boogie. Yeah, 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 I yeah, wish we yeah, could yeah, dance with the yeah, big yeah, children. Yeah, we yeah, promise yeah, to keep yeah, out of yeah, sight. Yeah, I can't yeah, help it. Yeah, I have to yeah, boogie. Yeah, yeah. No, Barnaby. Come back. Boogie, boogie, boogie. Musical statues. When the music yeah, stops, yeah, yeah, everyone yeah, freeze. Yeah, 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 yeah. Katie, you moved. I nearly stepped on this toy. Look. Oh, I'll just pop the toy over here with the rest of the toys. 
What are you doing, Barnaby? Sorry, Lucy's mum. Barnaby, we're supposed to stay here. But I love to boogie. Now, Lucy's dad is going to do some magic tricks. Hooray! Oh, goody. I love magic. It won't be real magic, just magic tricks. What are magic tricks? You'll see. Hello and welcome to the magic show. Ooh! You see? That's a magic trick. It's a trick wand. That was really good. My dad's been practising. And now I will make a rabbit come out of my hat. Hey, presto. <laughs> it's Flopsy, my pet rabbit. Dad must have borrowed him. Do it again. Yes, do it again. Uh, I can't. Lucy only has one rabbit. Oh, maybe he needs a bit of help. No, Strawberry. Rabbit, rabbit, rabbit. Oh, another rabbit. Ooh. Rabbity, rabbity, rabbity. And another rabbit. And um, another, and another, and another. Tweety birds, and tweety another. birds. Oh. My birds, where did they come from? Out of your hand. Stop it, Strawberry. But he hasn't done magic jelly yet. It's not a party about magic jelly. Ah, good. There's no more animals in the hat. Magic jelly! Ah, jelly! It's a jelly blood! <laughs> jelly blood! <laughs> Sounds like the children are having fun. Party food! We've got sandwiches, cake and jelly. Oh! I see you already have some jelly. Yes, it just sort of appeared magically. <laughs> Where's Gaston? Oh no, the birthday cake. <laughs> there he is. Naughty Gaston, come here. <laughs> He's stuck in the icing. Don't worry, Gaston, we'll rescue you. Oh, now I'm stuck! Ah, I'm stuck as well. I'm stuck too! <gasps> Time for the cake! Keep still! Pretend to be toys! Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Lucy! <laughs> now, Lucy, blow out the candles. It might get a bit spitty when she blows the candles out. Don't tell her to blow them all out in one go. Remember to blow them all out in one go. <gasps> <sighs> Don't forget to make a wish. I want a pink unicorn. Strawberry? No. Pink unicorn. Ah! Wow, a pink unicorn. <laughs> My wish came true. That's amazing. Uh, right, everyone. Home time. <laughs> Don't forget your party bags. Hello, Yasmin. Did you have a nice time? Yes. Lucy's dad did magic. He's awesome. What are you looking like that for? All right. Out you come. All of you. I thought I made it clear there were to be no real elves and fairies at the party. But as soon as my back is turned, you invite every elf and fairy in the world. <gasps> Where's Jake? He's missing. He must have fallen into a party bag. <sighs> All right, don't panic. Just wait here. Ooh, what's this? Yum! I love cake! Oh, I think Lucy lost one of her toys. Ah, there it is. Thanks, Lucy's dad. Your magic show was great. Yes, everyone said so. Oh, did they? This was my best party ever. I'm glad you had fun, Lucy. And no one really saw your... your little friends. So I suppose everything turned out all right. <laughs> Back to normal, eh? Yes, except for the unicorn. Oh, yes, the, the unicorn. I forgot about that. Don't worry, Dad. We can just keep it in the barn with the cows. <laughs> Hello, Redbeard. Ahoy there, Ben and Holly.
Molly, are you ready for a day of adventure? Yes, we are. Nanny Plum, me lovely fairy maiden. Are you coming too? Oh, if I must. Ha-ha! <laughs> a fine sunny day such as this is just right for adventure. It started to rain. No adventure today, Mr Pirate. A rainy day such as this is just right for adventure. Look, there's a rainbow. Ooh! And a rainbow is a pirate's best friend. Why is that? What do you find at the end of a rainbow? A pot of gold. And pirates love gold. Oh, pots of gold at the end of rainbows? That's just a fairy story. Well, you're a fairy, aren't you? Uh, yes, but... Come on, then. Make ready to sail. Ben, you can be cabin boy. Aye, aye, Captain. Polly can be lookout. Aye, aye, Captain. Polly Parrot can be the ship's parrot. Ah, pieces of eight. What about Gaston? Uh, he can be the ship's cat. Uh, cats don't normally bark, do they? Well, no. Gaston, can you say meow? <laughs> Sounds like a meow to me. Hop aboard, Gaston. <laughs> and Nanny Plum can be... Oh, wait a moment. What is it? You're a woman. Yes. Sailors say it's bad luck to have a woman on board. Bad luck to have a woman on board? How can you say such a thing in this day and age? You're right. It's probably a lot of old sailors' nonsense. Welcome aboard. What's my job, then? You just stand there and look pretty. Huh! Now, let's set sail for the end of the rainbow and find that pot of gold. Hurrah! 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 Yeah, hurrah. Big clouds ahead. I can't see the rainbow anymore. Just keep heading for where it was. That's thunder. A storm? Oh, dear. Can we go home now? Go home! The adventure's just beginning! Ah, he's in the Ooh. Ooh. How do you stay still, Redbeard? You just need to get your sea legs, that's all! It's a good job none of you get seasick! Oh, my tummy! Nanny Clark, you've gone green! Oh! Man overboard! Oh, sorry, I mean woman overboard! Well... Catch hold of his life belt! <laughs> oh, I fell in the sea. It was horrible. Perhaps those sailors were right. It is bad luck having a woman on board. Bad luck for the woman. I just want to get off this rocking boat and onto solid ground. Land ahoy! Straight ahead! Ah, a little island. Ah, oh, it's so nice to stand on something that isn't moving. Redbeard, do islands normally have fins? Not as a rule, no. What about eyes? Hardly ever. It's lovely being on dry land. Uh, I think you should come back now. No, I want to stay here. Pick me up on the way home. Nanny Plum, hurry! I'm not leaving this island. I wouldn't exactly call that an island. Why not? Because it's a fish and a whopping big one. It's Big Bad Furry. Ah, help me. Don't worry, you're in no danger as long as he doesn't think you're food. Like a fly or something. Ah! Nanny does look like a fly. Ah, I'm not a fly. I'm not a fly. Ah, get away. Don't let Ben. Flap your wings so much, Nanny. Fly faster, Nanny. Uh, Nanny, don't look so like a fly, will you? Ah! Ah! Nanny, catch hold of the hook. Oof. Now she looks a bit like a worm on a hook. Ooh, fish 
much like eating worms. I'm not a worm. I'm not a worm. Whoops. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea to use a fishing rod. Ah! Hang on, Danny. I'm pulling you in. Ah! And how's me sweet darling? Not having a very good day, are you? Not having a good day? Not having a good day? A fish just tried to eat me. Yep. Those sailors were definitely right about the woman on board bad luck stuff. Fog! Coming towards us! Fog? That's bad. Can we go home now? No! We've got more adventuring to do. I can see lights. It looks like another ship. Why, blow me down! That'd be the ship of my friend, Captain Squid. Ahoy there, Captain Squid! Funny, there's no one on deck. It's very quiet. Hello! Hello! Anyone home? Look, there's a meal on the table. It's still hot, but there's no one here. Meal on the table, but the boat's empty. This is certainly a mystery. Ooh. No one will never, ever know what happened to poor old Captain Squid. A mystery that will never be solved. Here's a note. Gone to bury treasure, back in five minutes. Oh, that solves it then. So, where do you think Captain Squid is? Hmm. Where would you bury treasure around here? The end of the rainbow! The pot of gold at the end of the rainbow! That'll be the gold Captain Squid's burying! Come on, let's get after him! It's not getting any closer. That's the thing about rainbows. When you walk towards them, they go further away. We're not going to walk there. We're going to fly. Fly? But you're an elf. You don't have any wings. Yes, but I'm an elf with a parrot. Ah, he's an eight. Saddle up, shipmates. There's the pot of gold. And there be Captain Squid, burying treasure. Redbeard, this is my treasure, not yours. How did you find me? We just followed the rainbow. Ah, rainbows. They're a pirate's worst enemy. No, they're not. Rainbows are a pirate's best friend. Depends whether you're burying treasure or finding it. Good point. So, anyway, don't let us stop you, Captain Squid. You get back to burying your treasure. Thank you kindly, Redbeard. I was just about to bury it here. Hang on. You can't trick me that easily. No one must see where I bury my treasure. You've all got to close your eyes. Thank you. OK, you can look now. So, where did you bury it? Why, it's right over there. Ha, <laughs> ha. You're trying to trick me again. Oh, you won't get it out of me that easy. The rainbow is moving. It's gone to the treasure. Ah, blasted rainbows. Don't worry, Captain Squid. We won't dig it up, will we, Redbeard? No, of course not. Is it home time yet? Yes, I think it is. Today's adventure is over. And I'd be honoured to take you all home on my yacht. That sounds a nice way to travel. Yacht? That's a rowing boat. Plenty of room if we all squeeze up. <laughs> Where can I sit? Wait a minute. Are you a woman? Yes. Oh, bad luck having a woman on board. It's all right. Turns out it's bad luck for the woman, not for us. Oh, in that case, welcome aboard, me lovely. <laughs> Oh, no! It's rocking worse than Redbeard's boat! Fun, isn't it? Yes! That's what being an elf pirate is all about! Having fun! By the way, none of you get seasick, do you? Oh. Today's adventure starts at Gaston's house. Gaston is 
lost. <laughs> Gaston, are you in? Do you want to play? <laughs> Here, Gaston, fetch the stick. <laughs> Gaston's taking a while. Yes. Where is he? Princess Holly! Home time! Oh, that's Nanny Plum. Ben! Home time! And that's my mum. Bye, everyone. See you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Let's play with Gaston. Yes. yes. Gaston? It's empty. Where is Gaston? Gaston. Gaston? Good morning, children. Has anyone seen Gaston today? No. Has anyone seen Gaston? No. Has anyone seen the ladybug? No. Gaston is lost. Nanny! 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 Have you seen Gaston? Gaston? No. Come to think of it, I haven't seen him at all today. He usually comes in for his breakfast first thing in the morning. But he hasn't touched his food. Gaston is lost. Don't worry, Holly. We can find Gaston by looking in a crystal ball. Let's use this one. It's a snow globe. With a little Eiffel Tower inside. Yes, pretty, isn't it? There you go. Paris in the snow. It's almost like you're there. But how can a snow globe find Gaston? Ah, that's where we need a little magic. The snow is clearing. Ooh! That's Gaston's house. There's Gaston. The crystal ball is showing us what Gaston did yesterday. And then we can work out where he is. Very clever, Nanny. Not just a pretty face, eh? Where's he going? That's me, feeding Gaston yesterday. Good morning, Gaston. Here's your breakfast. <laughs> Hungry boy. Where would you be without me to feed you? Now where's he going? He's at the fairy village. Morning, Gaston. That's my mum. Here's your breakfast. <laughs> He's had two breakfasts. I thought it was just me who fed him. Bye, Gaston. <coughs> He's off again. He's at the great elf tree. And that's the wise old elf. Ah, Gaston, I haven't forgotten you. Here's your breakfast. <coughs> I don't believe it. That's another breakfast. Oh, Gaston's off again. He can't eat any more breakfasts. Look, he's at the playgroup. And that's Mrs Fotheringill. Here's your porridge, Susan. Susan? Good girl, Susan. By my reckoning, that's four breakfasts. I think Gaston needs lots of food because he does lots of running about. <sighs> Surprised after all that eating. <laughs> Look, it's us. Yes, we played with Gaston yesterday. Gaston, are you in? <laughs> Do you want to play? <laughs> Here, Gaston, fetch the stick. We know this bit. Can you skip past it? OK, I'll fast forward. <laughs> has vanished. Let's watch that again. Stop! There he is. Forward a bit. Oh, he's disappeared. Back a bit. Forward. Gone. He jumps behind those clovers and disappears. So that's where he must be. Come on, we have to find him. 
Let's get the others to help. Wise Old Elf! Wise Old Elf! Gaston needs rescuing! You found him? Not exactly, but we know where he was before he disappeared. This is where Gaston was last seen. And then he vanished behind some clovers. Which clovers? There are lots here. We'll have to search all of them. Gaston? Gaston! Where are you, Gaston? This is crazy. How can anyone just disappear into thin air? Ah! Oh, where's my mum gone? Help! Help! Mum, where are you? Here! Uh, I can't see you. Are you invisible? No! Look down! Gosh, a hole in the ground. I can't see a thing. Wand, give me light. It's a huge cave. Ooh! It's full of sparkly diamonds and gems. Ah, looks like we've found a bit of the old dwarf mine. Yes, the little kingdom is riddled with dwarf tunnels. Those dwarfs certainly like to dig. Help! Help! Mum! Hello, everyone! I found Gaston! <laughs> Gaston! Come on, everyone. We've got a ladybird to rescue. Uh, what about me? Oh, yes. Sorry, Mum. I forgot about you. Charming. Let's climb down. It's a good thing I brought the elf rescue rope. Here we come. Whee! <laughs> Whee! Well, Gaston! <laughs> Gaston must be so hungry. I can hear voices. Someone's coming. Hide, everyone. In a dwarf mine, oh so old. We dig for diamonds, we dig for gold. <gasps> it's the dwarves. Dinner time. Good boy. <laughs> when you finish that, there's pudding. I don't believe it. Gaston's only been here a day and he's already got people feeding him. Right, lads. Back to work. Dig, dig, dig. Dig, dig, dig. Lucky the dwarves didn't spot us. They don't like strangers in their minds. Yes, that's why I took the precaution of hiding the elf rope. If the dwarves had seen the rope hanging from the top of the cave, they would have known someone was in here. I'm not called the wise one for nothing. Um, but if the rope's down here, how are we going to climb out? Don't worry. The wise one will have thought of that. He'll have a brilliant plan. Ah, oh, uh, it, this is a bit embarrassing. I, uh, uh, uh... So, the wise one pulled the rope down but forgot that we need to climb up it to get out. Yes, that's about it. No worries, we'll just fly out. But, but us elves can't fly. Oh, OK. I'll magic the rope to the top. Let's go! Wise old elf, aren't you climbing up? I am not climbing up a magic rope. See yourself. You can live down there forever. OK, OK. I'll climb up the magic rope. Hello, everyone. Oh. Hello, Mrs. Fotheringill. What are you doing here? I came as quick as I could when I heard Susan was in trouble. Susan? Who's Susan? Susan the Ladybug. <laughs> oh, there you are. <laughs> That's Gaston. <laughs> he won't answer if you call him Susan. Susan, I've brought you something to eat. <laughs> Poor Susan. Who would look after you if I didn't? Hmm? I've got a feeling Susan would manage just fine. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Lucy, I do love fishing. Me too.
too, Dad. It's so peaceful. Just what I need to get my nerves back in order. I wonder if we'll see any elves or fairies. Huh? Do we have to talk about weird magical stuff? <laughs> you know it upsets me. But you've seen the elves and fairies too, Dad. I've been thinking about it and I've decided I imagined it all. There are no such things as fairies or elves. <laughs> Hello, Lucy's dad. Ah, an elf in a submarine. Hello, Hello Lucy. Lucy. Hello, Ben and Holly. We're fishing. Uh, yes, we were just having a quiet morning's fishing. Dad, did you see that big fish? It's Big Bad Barry. <coughs> Barry. The fish is called Barry. Yes, the biggest, baddest fish in the lake. Whoa, what a whopper. <coughs> Dad, <coughs> you have to throw him back in the water. <coughs> he can't breathe. Of course I will. But, but just take a photo so I can show my friends. There you go, Barry. Bye-bye. <coughs> We've got another fish. Oh, well, this isn't a fish. It's a mirror. Can we keep it, Dad? Yes, it's from the bottom of the lake, so it can't belong to anyone. Cool. OK, well, it's, it's been nice chatting to you, um, little folk. <laughs> but I think it's time to go home. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Do you think the mirror is magic, Dad? I hope not. I've seen enough magic for one day. Listen, somebody's crying. <laughs> it's a girl. <laughs> Hello. What are you doing in the lake? I live here. You live in the lake? Yes, I'm a mermaid. <laughs> my name is Oceana. Why were you crying? I've lost my mirror. That must be the mirror Lucy found. And where is this Lucy? She's a big girl, so she'll probably be on her way to school. Bye, Lucy. Pick you up later. Bye, Dad! Oh, no. A mermaid's mirror must never be seen by big people. Don't worry. I'm sure Lucy won't show it to anyone. Look, everybody. I found a mirror. Ooh! Ooh. Lovely. That's perfect for our show and tell. Come up to the front, Lucy, and show the mirror to the whole class. Ah! My poor mirror. I'll never get it back because I can't walk on land. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll get your mirror back. Oh, thank you. Home time, children. Hi, Dad. Hi, Lucy. Good day. Lucy. Psst. Lucy. Ben, Holly, what are you doing here? We've come for the mirror. It belongs to a mermaid. A mermaid? Wow. Yes, and she needs her mirror back. Oh, OK. Please tell me this is just a game. Elves and fairies are one thing, but mermaids? Haven't you read about mermaids in books? Yes, but I've also read about dragons and witches, and they're not real either. Yes, yes they, they are. are. We can show you witches and dragons. And loads more, if you like. No, no, thanks. I'll take your word for it. So, where is this mermaid? After you left, she got called back home to the bottom of the lake. She'll be having her dinner. Fish, probably. We have to find Oceana and give her mirror back. Right then. Into the submarine. Lucy, would you like to come too? Yes, please. Um, we'd love to join you, but I think we are just a tad too big to fit in your little submarine and... <laughs> Ah! What's happening to me? Just shrinking you down. <laughs> My turn. Um, will we stay little forever? Oh, no. The spell will wear off in a bit and you'll grow big again. All aboard! <laughs> <laughs> Prepare to dive! Dive, dive, dive! It's beautiful! Look, Dad! Yes, it's all very pretty, 
In fact, I'm beginning to quite enjoy this magical adventure. You see, Dad, the world of elves and fairies is fun. Yes, I don't know why I was so worried about being magically shrunk down. It's amazing to be as small as these sweet little fishes. Not all the fish in the lake are sweet and little. Don't forget the fish you met this morning. Big, bad Barry. As I remember, Barry is about this big. Uh, that was before we were shrunk down, Dad. Now who would be about... That big! Oh, look! It's Barry! Ah! What does he want with us? He wants to eat the submarine. Any boat with me in it, Barry wants to eat. Yum, yum. Hold tight, everyone. I'm going to reverse. <laughs> Fear reversing. Fear reversing. Fear reversing. Now we go forwards. <laughs> it's no good. That is too fast. He's going to eat us. Don't worry, Lucy. We've been in Barry's tummy before. And it was fine. That's good to know. Well, hello, Barry. <laughs> I don't understand. He should have eaten us by now. Maybe he remembers how my dad was nice to him this morning. That's right. You let Barry go. And fish never forget. Or is that elephants? <coughs> oh, that's nice. Barry's saying that as you so kindly let him go this morning, he is your best friend forever. In fact, he now thinks of you as his brother. Lovely. Uh, one tiny problem. In all the excitement of being chased by Barry, we've got lost. <laughs> Barry's saying that he knows where the mermaids live and he'll take us there. That's what his brother wants. His brother? That's you, Dad. Oh, yes. <clears throat> um, Barry, old brother, please lead us to the land of the mermaids. <laughs> Right hole. Look, Barry's found the mermaids. Mermaids love to swim along. Mermaids sing their mermaid song. Mermaids comb their lovely They hair. sing so beautifully. Mermaids, mermaids wow, a mermaid palace. This must be where Oceana lives. Diving suits on, everybody. Nice, Barry. Ah, uh, we're friends of your brother. Yes, they're with me. Mermaids, mermaids everywhere. Hello. Hello, mermaids. We're looking for Oceana. She's over there, being sad. <laughs> Oceana, we brought your mirror back. Oh, thank you so much. But why is it so tiny? We had to shrink it down to fit in the submarine. Don't worry, the spell will wear off soon and it'll grow big again. There you go. My mirror. Thank you all so much. You're very welcome. Well, it's been uh, very interesting meeting you uh, mermaids, but we must be getting back now. Bye, Oceana. Bye, everyone. Bye, Betty. <laughs> suddenly got big again. Well, that happened to me and my dad. Yep. And the fun bit is, you don't know when. Which means we should get a move on. We don't want them to grow big in the submarine. Ooh! I'm growing! Yeah, so am I. We must get to land. Full speed ahead. Almost there. Almost there. Try not to roll too much. Ah. There was no need to panic. We had plenty of time. What an adventure! Yes, it was quite amazing. Remember, Lucy's dad, the little kingdom is meant to be secret. You must not tell any of your friends what you saw today. Tell my friends what I saw today? Let me think about that. And then the magical fairies shrank me down to the size of my thumb. I saw singing mermaids, and did I tell you that I now have a fish for a brother? No, I will not be telling anyone what I saw today. Wow! A flying saucer! Hello, Polly! 
It is I, Zyros, from Planet Bong. Oh, hello, Zyros. Nice to see you again. What's all this noise? Is it an alien invasion? No, it's our friend Zyros from Planet Bong. We have come for help from the Wise One. The Wise One? That must be me. No, dear. I think he means the wise old elf. Oh, yes. Smarty Pants. He lives at the Great Elf Tree over there. Thank you. We will go and look for Smarty Pants. <laughs> Cyros, the alien. Hello. Hello, Elf Ben. We are looking for the one they call Smarty Pants. He must mean the wise old elf. Did someone say my name? Goodness me, alien. <gasps> we need your help, Smarty Pants. Well, of course. Anything I can do. Is it true you can solve any problem? Yes, I can solve any problem. Good. We have a big problem. Once upon a time, our home planet was a wonderful planet. It was covered in plants and all was good. There was everything we needed and we were surrounded by beautiful flowers. We worked happily in our factories, and everything was fine. It sounds very nice. Yes, it was. But now it is very hot, and the plants do not grow anymore. Oh, that's a shame. So we want you to bring all the plants back to life and make Planet Bong nice again like it was before. Uh, that sounds a bit difficult. But can't you use your magic? Magic? Elves don't do magic, and I'm an elf. So, you cannot help us. You are not Smarty Pants. Yes, I am Smarty Pants, and I will save your planet with uh, b b magic. But wise old elf, elves don't do magic. Shh, don't worry about it, Ben. Good. We go now. This will be an elf expedition to save Planet Bong. Uh, I'll just need to stop on the way to collect a friend. For goodness sake, what is it now? We have found Smarty Pants. Here I am. How do I get down? Is there a ladder? I am afraid we do not have this ladder you speak of. Merely a primitive tronic beam. Ooh. Cool. But what do you want? It's the middle of the night. We're going to Planet Bong. It's very hot there. Ah, a holiday. I love holidays. I'll come too. Holiday, holiday. Yes, and I have a job to do there, which may require the services of a fairy helper. I can help. I'm good at helping. I need a sensible fairy. That's me. A fairy who does magic in a responsible, grown-up way. It's almost like you've said my name. Oh, very well. If we're going on holiday, we'll need to pack some things. No, no, no. It's not a holiday. Whatever. Let's see. What do we need for a holiday? Swimming costumes and towels? We'll need sunscreen. Sunscreen. Buckets and spades. Buckets and spades. Picnic basket. Beach ball. First aid kit. Cooker. Deck chairs. She's bringing everything but the kitchen sink. Oh, I nearly forgot. Thank you, wise old girl. Kitchen sink. Wow, you got all that into your bag. Yes, it's my magic bag. Come. Um, it's not really a holiday. We must leave. Hold tight, everyone. It can be bumpy. What do you mean, bumpy? Ah! <laughs> ah, what's happening? Why are we floating? There is no gravity in space. Nothing to hold you down. Sorry, I forgot to turn on the ship's gravity motor. Ooh, ooh. Oh. <gasps> Look a 
at all the pretty sparkly lights. Behold, the wondrous science of an alien race. Where's the toilet? We do not go to the toilet. Incredible! Being so advanced, they have stopped needing to go to the toilet. No toilet? But what if I want to go? You should have gone before we set off. Maybe there'll be toilets at the beach. Is there a beach on Planet Bong? Planet Bong is all beach. Wow! All beach? Yes. It is very hot and sunny. Would anyone like a snack? Yes, please. This machine can make any food or drink you like. Can it make orange juice? Yes. Mmm, <coughs> delicious. Can it make a jam and peanut butter and banana sandwich? Yes. Amazing. Can it make jelly? No. It can make anything in the universe, but not jelly. Which is a shame, because I like jelly. Jelly? I can do jelly. Nanny! Nanny. What? A little bit of jelly never did anyone any harm. Magic jelly, please. Aw, it is a bit small. I would like lots of jelly. OK. Magic jelly. Lots, lots, lots! Ah! Jelly blast! <laughs> a jelly flood inside a pressurised spacecraft. Nanny, you have surpassed yourself. Thank you, wise old elf. Mmm, <laughs> magic jelly is very tasty. <laughs> <gasps> what was that? We're slowing down. The engine is stopped. Why? I'll tell you why. It's full of magic jelly. Oh. Drifting in deep space. We're stuck here forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. We are not stuck here forever. Aren't we? No. We have Smarty Pants. He can fix the engine. Well, uh... I will open the engine. <laughs> Now, Smarty Pants will go outside and fix the engine. Uh, I'd love to, but I can't go outside. I don't have a spacesuit. A spacesuit? Oh, hang on. I think I packed one in my magic bag. Here you are. Uh, thank you, Nanny. Hmm, <laughs> this looks a bit like plumbing. Elves are good at plumbing, and I'm an elf. <laughs> oh. Hello there. What are you doing here? I'm the fairy helper, remember? Well, don't touch anything. This is advanced alien technology capable of travelling across the universe at the speed of light. Although, it is very like plumbing. Maybe if I give it a kick. <laughs> Why don't you just give it a push? Give it a push? This technological miracle? You just gave it a kick. Oh, uh, OK. Let's give it a push. It's just like getting a car to start. OK, Mr Zyros, give it a bit of gas. OK. Push! <laughs> Nothing. More gas. OK. Whoa! It worked! They went off like a, a rocket. Next stop, Planet Bomb! Hey! Hey! Come back! They've left us! That's outrageous! Help! 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 Will Nanny Plum and the wise old elf be lost in space forever? Find out next time in Planet Bong, Episode 2. Hello, Mrs Fig. Lovely autumn day, isn't it? Um, yes, wise old elf. Only problem is the apples are starting to fall. Wow, that was close. So far, I've been lucky. They've all missed my magic school. <laughs> oh, that 
one didn't miss. Oh, dear. My poor magic school. Broken. Well, you're a fairy. Can't you just mend it with magic? No. Magic always leads to trouble. You don't like magic, do you, Mrs Fig? That's right, Holly. I want to mend the school the normal, sensible, safe way by using a builder. Well, you're in luck. I'm a builder, but it won't be cheap. We're going to need bricks, cement, roof tiles. I know. We'll have a cake stall. The money we make from selling cakes will pay for the repairs. A cake stall? It sounds fun. Let's tell everyone to get baking. Daddy! Daddy! An apple fell on Mrs Fig's magic school. And now the school has a big hole in it. Oh, dear. That's a shame. Mrs Fig is asking everybody to bake cakes to raise money. Bake cakes? Uh, well, don't tell your mother about that. About what, darling? Mrs Fig is running a cake stall. Oh, how exciting. I'll bake some cakes. R really? There's no need. Mrs Fig needs them today. Then I'd better start straight away. Oh, no. What is it, Daddy? Your mother is not very good at baking cakes. Oh. She bakes horrible cakes and she gets very upset if anyone doesn't like them. dum de dum de dee dee doo That's odd. Who's in my kitchen? <gasps> the Queen baking cakes! Yes, Nanny Plum. Would you like to try a cake? Maybe later. Cakes! Cakes! The Queen's baking cakes! I know. We'll have to leave the country. Pack a bag, everyone. The Queen's cakes can't be that bad. They're worse than bad. They're... Cake time. Who wants to try my lovely cakes? Uh, um, 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 uh... I've got rock cakes... Fudge cake and gingerbread. They look lovely. In fact, they look too good to eat. You don't want to eat them, do you? You think they're horrid. No, no, no. I can't wait to try them. Have a rock cake. Ow! Did you just say ow? No, I said oh. Is it nice? It's inedible. I, I mean, incredible. But maybe I'll save it for later. Try the fudge cake. Ah, uh, isn't it someone else's turn? Don't you want my fudge cake? Of course I do. What do you think? <coughs> Tasty? <coughs> Are you all right, Daddy? My mother's stuck. What's he saying? I'm saying my mother's stuck. Oh, I think his mouth is stuck shut. <coughs> Oh, that was horrific! You think the fudge cake is too sticky, don't you? You hate it! No, no, of course not, darling. It's uh, amazing! Oh, good. Try the gingerbread. Dunk it in your coffee. That will make it all soft and yummy. Um, the coffee's just rolled off it. It's completely dry. Take a bite. You know, maybe I'll save this one for later, too. OK. Well, I can't stand around chatting. I've got loads more cakes to bake. Rock-hard rock cakes, super sticky fudge, waterproof gingerbread. We'll have to warn the whole of the Little Kingdom. The Queen's baking cakes! <laughs> Queen's baking cakes! Oh, no! I can't eat one of those cakes again. No one can eat them and survive. Hello! Cake time, everyone! Uh, yes, but you shouldn't have troubled yourself, Your Majesty. We already have lots of cake. You don't want my cakes? Oh, yes, we do. You think they're horrible, don't you? Of course we don't. Oh, Good, then. I'll put them here. That should raise lots of money to mend your school, Mrs Fig. Thank you, Your Majesty. Maybe I should have used magic to mend the school. It would have been less dangerous. Keep clear of the cakes. No one eat them. Ooh, cakes. Wait! Yow! 
What kind of a cake is that? It's a rock cake. Queen Thistle baked it. Oh, the Queen baking again. The fudge cake glues your mouth shut. And the gingerbread is waterproof. Incredible! What can these things be made of? I want to do some tests on these cakes. This machine tests how strong things are. Let's start with something very weak, like this egg. The egg had a strength of one. Now let's try a brick. The brick had a strength of five. Now let's try the Queen's rock cake. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's reached eleven. Eleven? Nothing has gone to eleven before. Stand back, everyone. <gasps> the cake broke the machine. That cake is the strongest substance known to man. The fudge cake stuck Daddy's mouth shut. Hmm. Let's test how sticky it really is. Stop, wise old elf! Don't touch the fudge cake! You'll be stuck to it forever! OK, let's just say the Queen has created the stickiest substance known to man. What about the gingerbread? Daddy dipped it in his coffee and it stayed dry. Let's see how waterproof it is. Amazing! The most waterproof substance known to man. These cakes must be locked away. They must never be eaten. Not eaten, no. But maybe they can be used for something else. I do hope I've made enough cakes. What if they need more for the cake stall? Trust me, they won't want any more cake. More cake, please. Really? Yes, as many as you can bake. And fudge cake. And gingerbread. Oh, goody. They love my cakes. I'd better get baking. Who's eating all these cakes? Eating them? No one's eating them. So why do you want more? These cakes are the perfect building material. The rock cakes are super strong bricks. We're gluing them together using the super sticky fudge cake. And then the super waterproof gingerbread makes great roof tiles. Amazing! But of course, you must never tell the Queen. Never tell the Queen what? Uh... Oh, Mrs Fig, you've mended the school. So you managed to raise enough money by selling my cakes. Um, let's just say your cakes were a great help. Yes, three cheers for Queen Thistle. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hang on. These bricks look just like my rock cakes. Uh, yes. And this cement is just like my fudge cake. It is my fudge cake. Oh, no! At least she hasn't spotted the roof. And the roof tiles are my gingerbread. You didn't want to eat my cakes. Well, they're not really for eating, are they, darling? Not if you want to survive. I thought everybody liked my cakes, but nobody did. I wish I'd never baked a single cake. <laughs> But, Mummy, if we hadn't baked any cakes, we wouldn't have mended the school. Holly is right. It's only because of your baking the magic school is fixed. I suppose that's true. Hooray for Queen Thistle! Hooray! In fact, we could do with some cakes to finish the chimney, if you don't mind baking some more. Could you make some bricks for my house? I want to build a patio. Do you do paving slabs? Well, I suppose I could. Do you do drain pipes? Do you do MDF? Everyone loves my mummy's cakes. Come on, Gaston. Wiggle your legs. <laughs> <laughs> Gaston loves wiggling his legs. <laughs> oh, 
Has Gaston got one new spot today? I'm not sure. Do ladybirds get new spots? Ladybirds get a new spot for every birthday. Wow! Gaston's got lots of spots, so he must have had lots of birthdays. <coughs> and lots of birthday parties. <coughs> oh! Have you never had a birthday party, Gaston? <coughs> That's really sad. Daddy, Mummy, it's not fair. Gaston's never had a birthday party. Well, I wish I'd never had a birthday party. Oh, darling, it's your birthday tomorrow and you'll enjoy it. No, I won't. This year I don't want a party. Oh, Daddy, you say that every year. Well, this year I mean it. I don't like my parties with the elf band singing about me getting older. You're lucky you're getting a party, Daddy. Gaston's never even had one. <sighs> then give my party to Gaston. I'm going to have a bath. Oh, same every year. So grumpy about his birthday, but he always enjoys it in the end. Come on, let's go and see how the elf band are getting on. Hello, wise old elf. We've come to hear the song you're doing for Daddy's birthday. Ah, yes. We've come up with a good one this year. I think King Thistle will be very pleased. King Thistle is old, 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 and today he's even older. King Thistle is old, 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 old. Very sweet. And I, Redbeard the Elf Pirate, will fire myself out of this cannon in the King's honour. But the King's birthday isn't until tomorrow. This is a dry run to see if it works. Light the fuse! Lighting the fuse. Whee! Hurrah! Where do you think he'll land? Who knows? Ah. Oh. I do like a nice, relaxing bath. It's good to get away from all that talk about birthdays. Happy birthday, Your Majesty! Ah! Get out of my bath! It's not my birthday! I know! This is a dry run! Now, see here! I don't want any birthday stuff! Ah, that's what you say every year! Look! I don't want a cake, I don't want a song, and I don't want a pirate in my bath! So, you really don't want a party? No! I don't want a party! Not this year, not next year, not any year! Never! No! Party! And that's when he started shouting. He was a tiny bit angry. So he really doesn't want a party? No. Oh, dear. What will we do with the presents we wrapped? And the cakes I baked. And our new song. And me cannon. We've got a whole birthday party ready and no one to give it to. Um, Daddy did say Gaston could have his party. <coughs> Poor Gaston has never had a birthday party. <coughs> Would you like a birthday party, Gaston? Then it's decided it will be Gaston's birthday party. <laughs> Hooray! We'll need a new song for Gaston from the Elf Band. Yes, Your Majesty. And I'll bake Gaston some cakes. And I'll fire myself out of me cannon in Gaston's honour. He'll appreciate it. Not like somebody whose name I won't mention. The King, I mean. <laughs> this will be the best party ever. What do you think Gaston would like for his birthday present? A squeaky toy. Very good. <coughs> now to wrap it. Spotty wrapping paper. Brilliant. Hello, I've finished my bath. Uh-oh, what are you doing? Relax, darling. It's nothing to do with you. A likely story. It really isn't, so stop fussing. Ah, uh, fine. Mmm, can I smell cakes? 
I thought so. What's going on, Nanny? Are you baking cakes? Yes, I am. These cakes had better not be for me. <laughs> They're not. Now, Shoe, go on. I haven't got time to talk to you. I suppose it is nice that they want to give me a party so much. <laughs> what shall we do for Gaston's birthday card? Let's draw a picture of Gaston. Good idea. Hello, Holly. Hello, Daddy. We're making a birthday card. I don't suppose it's for me, is it? No. No, of course not. Ah. I don't think my face is that red. And I don't have black spots. I told you, Daddy. It's not for you. <laughs> oh, yes. So you did. Ben! Hello, Dad. Do you want to help deliver the party invitations? Yes, please. Off we go. Oh, they're delivering invitations for my party. How sweet. Special delivery. Invitations to Gaston's birthday. Gaston's party is tomorrow at the Frog Pond. Are you all coming? Yes. yes. Of course we are. Where next? We mustn't forget Gaston. It is his party. <laughs> there you go, Gaston. An invitation to your very own birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Gaston loves eating letters. So, are you coming to your party, Gaston? <clears throat> I think that means yes. Ah. Oh. How are the preparations going for my party tomorrow? Your party? You're not having a party. Ho <laughs> ho! I know your little plan. What little plan? You told us not to plan anything. Ha <laughs> ha! That's right. I did. Good night then. Good night. <laughs> uh, oh, no one here. I expect they're all downstairs. <laughs> no birthday cards. Where is everybody? Of course, they're all secretly hiding outside, ready to shout, Happy Birthday, King Thistle! <laughs> oh, there's no one here. They must be having the party somewhere else. Ah, that sounds like a party. I'd better go and find out where it is. Not much of a party without me, the birthday boy. <laughs> and Gaston's brother, Tony, with Pam. And the little ladybirds, Amber, ruff, Emerald ruff, and Keith. Ruff, ruff, ruff. Happy birthday, Gaston. Here's your present. Ruff, ruff. <coughs> it's a squeaky toy. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I'm sorry, do you have an invitation? I don't need one. I'm King Thistle. King Thistle, King Thistle. No, your name's not on here. What? But it's my party. No, it's not, mate. It's Gaston the Ladybird's party. What? Take it easy, fella. It's supposed to be a happy occasion. It's all right. He's with us. What's going on? Where's my birthday party? You said you didn't want a party. I know I said that, but what I really meant was I do want a party. Oh, Daddy. You are silly. Yes, I know. Oh, well, I'm sure Gaston won't mind sharing his party with you. <laughs> Gaston, be nice and share your present with King Thistle. <laughs> Gaston, that's not how to behave on your birthday. <laughs> For me? How kind. <laughs> it's a squeaky toy. <laughs> yes, for you to chase. And now it's time for the birthday song. He's round and he's red with big black spots. How dare they? It's about Gaston, Daddy. He rolls on his back and he barks a lot. He's Gaston the Ladybird. That was really fun. Maybe birthday parties aren't that bad. What's that noise? Happy birthday! Ah! Hooray! Happy birthday, Daddy. Oh, oh, thank you, Holly. Help! Help! We're 
They're lost in deep space. I can't believe they just left us behind. I hope they turn the spaceship around and come back for us. Yes, otherwise we'll be floating here together for all eternity. How long is eternity? A very, very long time. Oh, well, let's play a game while we're waiting. I spy with my little eye something beginning with S. Stars. Yes! You're good at this. Can I have another go? If you must. I spy with my little eye something beginning with, um, S. Stars. No, space. Ha! <laughs> You see, this is a really good game. This is going to be a very long eternity. Holiday, here we come. Soon, we will be at Planet Ball. But what about the wise old elf and nanny? Oh, we left them behind. Well, it was nice knowing them. No, Daddy. We have to go back for them. Yes, without Smarty Pants, we cannot make Planet Pong beautiful again. Stars. No. Space. No. Oh, all right. It was stars. Can I have another go? No. Oh. Wise old elf. Nanny. Saved. We're saved. Saved from an eternity of I Spy. Oh, don't worry. We can carry on on board. There's loads of things. Spaceship. Uh, space suit. Ugh. Smarty Pants, when we get to Planet Bong, you will make all the plants grow again. Uh, of course. Listen, Nanny, when we get to Planet Bong, I may need a little bit of help. Yes, I am the fairy helper, and I already helped you mend the flying saucer. Yes, this might be a bit bigger. How bigger? Big! We are here. Planet Bong. Wow! Planet Bong is all sand and hot. The perfect holiday planet. <gasps> We're going into the ground. I am home again, and I have brought Smarty Pants to save our planet. The great leader of Planet Bong is here to celebrate this special meeting of peoples. Hello! He's tiny! Yes, on Planet Bong, we get smaller as we get older. Hello! Who said that? <laughs> He's down there, Daddy. Oh, hello. Hello. Say hello, everybody. The great leader is very old. It is a fantastic honour for you to meet him. Say hello, Gaston. Hello. <gasps> Gaston's eaten the great leader. Uh. Naughty Gaston. Spit the great leader out. <coughs> Terribly sorry. He's not really house-trained. Uh, yes. <laughs> As our special guests, we will now welcome you with a song. What a horrible noise! When are they going to start playing the tune? This is our national anthem. And delightful it is, too. Cyrus? Why do you live underground? Once, Planet Bong was covered in plants. Everywhere was green and beautiful, and the people were happy. Then the plants began to die out. It became too hot to live on the surface, so we moved underground. Everyone lives underground? Yes, even the animals. Animals? <laughs> It is just a flobber gurgle quat splog. It is a pet. <laughs> oh, the flobber gurgle thwat splog is so cute. <laughs> Mummy, can we take the flobber gurgle thwat splog back home with us? Please. I think it is much happier living here, darling. Oh. Um, when do we go to the beach? Now. We will take the lift. Lovely big beach. 
beach. But where's the sea? There is no sea. So where can we swim? Nowhere. There is no water. Not for swimming, not for drinking, not for anything. Nothing but sand. Yes, just sand and sand and sand and sand and sand. Yes, Planet Bong is sand and sand and sand. Planet Bong is doomed! So, this isn't a holiday? No, it's a rescue mission, Your Majesty. Yes, Smarty Pants is here to save us. Please, Smarty Pants, make the plants grow. Uh, yes. I've given this problem a lot of thought, and I believe that I, Smarty Pants, have the answer. Good. So, without further ado, I will hand over to my fairy helper. Me? Yes. Just magic the plants up, would you? Oh, right. It is very excellent. Thank you. My pleasure. Now, please do the rest of the planet. What? The whole planet? Yes. But I'm Nanny Plum, not an interplanetary terraforming bioengineer. Do you mean this is it? Yes. Plants aren't easy to do. Lots of fiddly bits. Oh. So, Smarty Pants, you cannot save us after all? Uh, well, no. Thank you for trying. So, Planet Bong will never again have lots of plants and be beautiful once more? No. Wait a minute. Plants need water to grow. Yes. And if you had lots of water, you could have lots of plants. Yes. So, we just need to make it rain. I can do that. Rain's much easier to make than plants. It's just water. Then, please, make it rain. Magic wand on Planet Bong. Make it rain loud and strong. Nothing is happening. Did the magic work? Yes, it worked. Look up. Clouds. Yes, and lots of them. And clouds mean... Rain! <laughs> it's raining! The plants are coming back. Yay! Gosh, they're growing so fast. Yes, they needed water. The flowers look so pretty and smell so lovely. It's an alien paradise. Thank you so much. You have saved Planet Bong. It's all so lovely. An innocent, unspoiled world of nature, gentle and beautiful in its loveliness. Yes. What's happening? We are starting up our factories again. Are they supposed to make all that smoke? Yes, they always do that. How lovely. And now you can have your holiday. Uh, you know what? I think we'll just go home. Very well. I will take you home. <laughs> you again, Smarty Pants. Oh, it was nothing. For you, maybe. I magicked up a whole planet's worth of rain. To honour our alien guests, the elf band will now play a tune. Uh, are you sure that's a good idea? Oompa, 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 what beautiful music! Is this your national anthem? Ah, uh, who knows? It could be. It is wonderful. And now I must return to Planet Bong. Day, Papa. I made you breakfast. Oh, thank you, Strawberry. 
Look at your card. To the nicest papa in the world. How sweet. And no work for you today. You get the day off. That sounds good. But what shall I do? You can play. Who will I play with? The other daddies, of course. It's Father's Day for every daddy. Morning, Dad. Breakfast. Oh, what a lovely card, Ben. It's a picture of me waving from the elf truck. <gasps> the truck! I've got to make my food deliveries. No, Mr Elf. You've got the day off. But, but... Don't worry. Someone else is doing your deliveries. Oh, really? Who? Food delivery! Come and get it! What? Nanny Plum? Hello, Mr Elf. I'm in charge of your deliveries today. So you just sit back and relax. Sit back and relax with Nanny doing my deliveries. Where's the break? Oops. Oh, dear. Morning time. Hey, what? Happy Father's Day, Daddy. Ah, breakfast in bed. If only every day could start like this. But every day does start like this. You always have breakfast in bed. Ah, yes. Read your card, Daddy. You're the best daddy in the universe. <laughs> and today you can do whatever you like. Yes, you're not the king today. You're just my daddy. Marvellous. Now, make sure Mrs Fig's egg is nice and fresh. And don't forget the orange for Mrs Peach. Right, a peach for Mrs Orange. No, an orange for Mrs Peach. Yes, yes, whatever. Hey, hey, you forgot the egg. Hello there. It's the king. Hooray! Oh, oh I'm not the king today. I'm just a humble daddy, like you lot. And today, all the daddies have to play. Yes, here's a ball. Ho-ho! To you, Dad. To you, Your Majesty. To you. Oops. Yeah! It's Redbeard the Elf Pirate. Which scurvy scoundrel will be shooting cannonballs at me now? Uh, that would be me. Oh, begging your pardon, King Thistle. That's quite all right. I'm just a normal daddy today. All the daddies have the day off. Because it's Father's Day. Ah, I know. And that's why I brought this here card. Hello, Nigel. Hello, Fred. Seen Dad today. Hello. I've come to join in the fun. I'm sorry, wise old elf, but you have to be a daddy to have the day off. Actually, Holly, I am a daddy. I have three sons. Three sons? Yes, but I don't talk about it much. It's a bit uh, embarrassing. My eldest boy ran off to sea to make his fortune. He has a big red beard and he's a, a pirate. Happy Father's Day, Dad! Thank you, son. And from me too, Dad. Thank you. Redbeard, you never said the wise old elf was your dad. Well, pirates don't like to admit they have mummies and daddies. True, but they all do. And that's a fact. Captain Squid! Aha! What are you doing here, you scurvy old rogue? I'm keeping an eye on you, you blackguard, so you don't steal my treasure. Scallywag! Scoundrel! Ha ha! Happy Father's Day, Dad. Thank you, son. What? Captain Squid is your son, too? That's, that's right! right. Oh, two of my son's pirates. But at least I have one son who's sensible. Guess what, Dad? I have decided to be a Viking. Ha-ha! Oh. <laughs> Food delivery! Oh, good. I ordered an egg. I've got an egg, but I've got an orange. Have you brought my orange? Sorry, Mrs Peach. Just out of oranges. Here's some broccoli instead. I don't like broccoli. Oh, but it's good for you. This is a lettuce, but I ordered a cabbage. Oh, for goodness sake. You're all so grumpy. We're only grumpy because you muddled our delivery. It's not like when Mr Elf does it. Oh, here. You can help yourselves. <laughs> Food delivery. Bye. <laughs> to you, Ben. To you. Let's see how high I can kick the ball. Ah! Ben? Hello, Mum. Did you kick this ball?
all? Um... No, it was, uh, me. Oh, dear. This Father's Day game has got a bit silly, hasn't it? It's not as bad as last Mother's Day. Yes, you mummies know how to party. <laughs> Do you know what time it is? Yes, it's Mother's Day. <laughs> yes, maybe we did go a bit wild. Come on, daddies. Let's play in the meadow. Hooray! Let's play basketball. We'll need two nets. We'll need a referee. dum de dum de dee dee doo Nanny, we need a referee for our game. OK, what's the game? Basketball. Never heard of it. One team has to throw the ball into this net and the other team has to throw the ball into that net. And you can only... OK, OK, I don't need to know all the little details. Let's start. But I haven't finished telling you the rules. Yes, yes. Go on, Ben. Throw it in the net. Goal! Nanny, in basketball, you don't say goal. You say... Yes, yes. I'm awarding you five points. But that's too many. I decide the rules. I'm the referee. Carry on. Remember, Daddy, you mustn't kick the ball. Oh, I see. I'll use magic then. Ah-ha! <laughs> Goal! You can't use magic. It's Father's Day. What has magic got to do with Father's Day? Yellow card for being naughty. But I'm the king. Red card for talking back. Play on! <laughs> to that team. No, no, that's too many points. Oh, this will take forever. Let's make it easier. What if the ball had legs? <laughs> then it could score on its own. Hooray! This is too easy. OK, I'll make it harder. I'll give the next legs too. <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. Why don't you add some dragons for good measure? Oh! Oh, that's a good idea, Wise Old Elf. Dragons! <laughs> ah, so this is basketball. What a fun game. Well done, Wise Old Elf, for suggesting it. But, but, but... Game over. What's the score, Nanny? What score would you like? Can we have a hundred million? OK, a hundred million points to this team. Hooray! We have a hundred million too. Yes, a hundred million points to that Hooray! team. Oh, that means it's a draw. Hooray! Ah, oh, what a great Father's Day this has been. It'll be hard getting back to my work tomorrow. Yes, it'll be hard getting back to my food deliveries again. Oh, the deliveries. Uh, I'm afraid it all went a bit wrong today. Mrs Peach wanted an orange and Nanny gave her broccoli. And I think I gave Mr Egg a peach. Or was it the other way round? It'll take weeks to sort this out. I'm quite looking forward to it. I really enjoyed Father's Day. It's a shame it's over. There's still a tiny bit of Father's Day left, Papa. I'll read you a bedtime story. <laughs> Thank you, Strawberry. Ready? Once upon a time... A big bad wolf came along to the straw house. And he huffed and he puffed. And then there was a loud knock on the door. Who could that be? said the princess. With a yo-ho-ho, -ho, the pirates set sail across the deep blue sea. Does the story have to be about pirates? Not about pirates. What else could the story be about? How about Vikings? Oh, OK. Vikings, then. The Vikings set sail across the deep blue sea. And on the way, they met a pirate! yo ho, -ho! <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad being a father. Not bad at all. Fairy cakes. Who wants fairy cakes? Oh, yes, please. Wise old elf. Hmm, don't mind if I do. 
Ah, my ears are wiggling. That means there's magic about. Well, I did make the cakes with magic. Why can't you make cakes the normal way? By baking them in the oven. I don't have time for baking in ovens. I have lots of work to do. Ah, what work? I do more work than you. No, you don't. I do more work than you. I could do what you do, no problem. I could do what you do easily. Why don't you swap jobs? Then you'd know who does the most work. Good idea. Oh, 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 very funny, Your Majesty. I'm not joking. As your king, I command you to swap jobs for one day. The wise old elf can be Nanny. And Nanny can be the wise old elf. But... But... No buts. It's a royal command. All right, then. You'd better have my hat. And you'd better have my apron. Now, I'd better warn the elves what they're in for. Calling all elves. Just for today, somebody else is going to be the wise old elf. Who is it? Me! <gasps> Danny Plum! Don't worry. She won't do any magic. She has to do everything the elf way. I'm the wise old elf. Ahem. <clears throat> Magic always leads to trouble. Well, I have to go. I'm being Nanny Plum for the day. Goodbye. Oh, I should have taken Nanny's wand away. Don't worry. Nanny said she wouldn't do any magic. Hmm. I'll know if she does. My ears will wiggle. So, what does the wise old elf do all day? He has a list of jobs. He starts with the toy factory. Hello, everyone. I'm the wise old owl. Don't worry. It's just for today. Oh, I see. Um, well, wise old elf, the glute machine is broken. Can you fix it? No problemo. Time for a bit of magic. My ears are wiggling. Nanny is doing magic. Hello? No magic. All right. Keep your hair on. Nanny, you're the wise old elf today, remember? Oh, yes. How would he fix the gloop machine? He'd probably just kick it. OK. The packaging machine isn't working. Do you want me to kick it? Yes, please, wise old elf. The paint machine needs fixing. Oh, my foot's beginning to ache. Wise old elf. I'm Nanny Plum today, Your Majesty. Do you have Nanny's list of jobs? List of jobs? I don't think she has one. Nanny isn't one for lists. Why not start by washing my socks? All right, let's go down to the washing room. Oh, these stairs are going up. But a moment ago, they went down. Yes, it's magic. The stairs change all the time. The rooms get bored, so they move around. The toilet was on the roof once. Yes, that was fun. But how do I get down to the kitchen? You ask the stairs to go down. Stairs go down. You have to say the magic word. What magic word? Abracadabra? No, please. Oh, please go down. <laughs> Thank you. Right, let's get these dirty clothes into the washing machine. How do I turn it on? It's a magic washing machine. You have to talk to it. OK. Washing machine, wash the clothes. Say the magic word. Oh, please. No, abracadabra. Oh, abracadabra. <laughs> Goodness, this is harder than I thought it would be. Right, then. What does the wise old elf do now? Next on the list, the elf school. Good morning, children. Where's the wise old elf? Today, I'm the wise old elf. Ahem. <clears throat> Magic always leads to trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's today's lesson? We've been building a robot. You can ask him anything. OK, where am I? You are on the moon. 
That's not right, is it? Uh, maybe ask Laura. OK. <clears throat> Where am I? You are at the bottom of the sea. Hmm. How would the wise old elf mend it? He'd probably disassemble the bias kernel, Boolean geek logic, Higgs, Boson, Quark, and then rewire them. Even if I had the foggiest idea what you were talking about, can you see me doing that? No. OK, magic time! <laughs> dee dee da, dum dee. Ah! My ears are wiggling. Now, where am I? You are here. You can't get more accurate than that. <laughs> Hello? Nanny? I know. Your ears are wiggling. Which means you are doing magic. Stop it! Stop it now! I do not like magic. Now, Holly, what is my next job? Um, magic school. Oh. Good morning, children. I am Nanny Plum for today. Good morning, Nanny Plum. Today's magic lesson is magic always leads to trouble. So, don't do magic. The end. Is that it? Yes. Now, I think I'll have a little nap. So, this is Nanny Palum's bedroom. It's all flowers, bunnies and cushions. Lovely, isn't it? At least I can have a little sleep. Ah! It's so soft! It's not a bed, it's a giant pudding. What's next? The wise old elf has a little nap. So, this is the wise old elf's bedroom. How could a room be more boring? Ow! That's not a bed. It's a plank of wood. Wise old elf, please report to elf rescue. Oof. What now? You have to sit here and wait for the red phone to ring. If the red phone rings, you launch Elf Rescue and save people from deadly peril. Are the biscuits? Yes. Oh, goody. Oh, how could a bed be so soft? Nanny! Oh, what is it now? Nanny! I want a snack! Nanny! OK, Your Majesty. Aha! Jelly. Your snack, King Thistle. Lovely. What is it? Jelly. <laughs> oh, that's magic jelly. We don't want a jelly flood. Oh, oh, there's not going to be a jelly flood. But all it takes is someone to shout, magic jelly, more, more, more. Who would be foolish enough to shout, magic jelly, more, more, more? Whoops! Jelly flood! Somebody answer the phone. I'm busy eating biscuits. Nanny, you're in charge. Oh, all right. Hello, Elf Rescue here. It had better be something important. Um, uh, I, I seem to have made a jelly flood. Can you rescue us, please? Okie dokie. Elf Rescue a go. Launch everything. Elf Rocket A OK. Elf Plane. Okay. Elf helicopter, A OK. Hooray! Thank goodness you're here, Elf Rescue. A jelly flood isn't a job for Elf Rescue, it's a job for Nanny Plum. Magic time! Thank you, Nanny. Being you for a day wasn't easy. And it wasn't easy being you either. Ah, I'm Nanny Plum again. And I'm the wise old elf. Good. Everything is back to normal. Hooray! Can I celebrate by turning you into a frog? Don't even think about turning me into a frog. <laughs> To you, Strawberry. To you, Holly. Whoa! What was that? I don't know. It was coming from the old dwarf mine. But 
That isn't the dwarf mine. Empty? Yes, I think so. I can hear voices. Whoa! That was loud. We'd better tell the grown-ups. Wise old elf, there are noises in the mine. The mine? What mine? The old dwarf mine. You're not supposed to be in there. It's dangerous. We weren't in there. We just heard a big bang. Yes, and the ground shook. Like that! Oh, no! The dwarves have woken up! Woken up? Yes. Deep inside the mine, the dwarves have been sleeping. They sleep for years and years. Then, when they wake up, they start to dig. What are they digging for? Precious jewels, gold, diamonds, gemstones. But digging for things doesn't make a big bang noise. It does when the dwarves do it. They carry out big explosions underground. And then dig through the mess. They just dig and dig and dig and dig and dig. Yes, yes, Mrs Elf. They keep digging until they are so tired they fall asleep again. They sleep and sleep and what sleep. What do dwarves look like? They're big. Bigger than us. Yes, dwarves are huge. This is a worrying time. The whole of the little kingdom might get dug up. Holes everywhere. What are we going to do? Just hope. Hope they dig in the other direction. Hope they don't come anywhere near us. Morning, all. Just letting you know there'll be some digging work in this area. Oh, no. We apologise in advance for any inconvenience caused to your journey. Journey? What journey? We're not going anywhere. No? I would if I were you. Look at this hole. Someone could fall in. Hmm. I think we need to talk to King Thistle. to see you, Your Majesty. Hmm? Dwarves, Your Majesty. Dwarves? They're back. No. I'm afraid so. We haven't had a dwarf infestation for years. But now they've woken up. I see. Well, they live underground mostly. Maybe they won't bother us. But they've already dug a hole by the elf tree. It's only one hole. Maybe you can turn it into a pond or something. Your Majesty, you don't understand. This is just the start. The dwarfs will dig up all of the little kingdom. Wise old elf, you worry too much. It will be fine. <laughs> Goodness gracious. I say, do you mind? What's that, mate? You've made a great big hole in my courtyard. Now, pal, don't get upset. Upset? My castle is falling over. Yeah, you want to get that fixed. Now, listen here. I'm the king. Oh, a complaint, is it? You'd better talk to the boss. Right, I will. Dig, dig, dig. Dig, dig, dig. Good work, chaps. Dig, dig, Keep it going. Dig, dig, Hello. Dig, I want dig, to speak dig, to the boss. Dig, is he... Hang on a minute. Oi, lads, dig, dig, just pipe down a second, OK? Right, you were saying... I want to speak to the boss. I'm the boss. Do you have an appointment? He doesn't need one. He's the king. A king doesn't make appointments. Not even at the hairdressers. Uh. Daddy doesn't have any hair. He's bald. Well, that's not our fault. Look, we want to complain about the noise. What noise? The noise from the mine. Oh, I can't hear anything. <laughs> Noise. Now, look, I'm the king, and I'm commanding you to stop all the digging. Yeah, the thing is, though, you're only king above the ground, just to the topsoil. Below that, I'm the boss. But... We can't stop digging anyway. That's what we do. We won't stop until we've found gold and diamonds and gems. Got an idea. Nanny Plum can magic you up some gold and diamonds and gems. Good thinking, Holly. There we go. Problem solved. Now kindly stop digging. But I can magic up that stuff. Eh? 
Where's the fun in that? You have to dig for it. Now, if you don't mind, some of us have work to do. Come on, lads. Let's get digging. Well, that could have gone better. Let's go away and come up with another plan. So if no one wants this treasure, can I have it? Yes, yes, take it. Silence, please. Everyone, now, we are gathered here to discuss the dwarf problem. They're making loud bangs. They're digging holes everywhere. They've dug up my carrots. Yes, yes, we all know how annoying they can be. Can't you magic them away? No, fairy magic doesn't work on dwarves. I know how to get rid of the dwarves. We take all this treasure... Oh. Sneak into the mine and bury the treasure deep down. Oh, and then the dwarves will dig it up. And they'll be happy and stop digging. Correct. Excellent plan. All right, Nanny Plum's in charge. Off you go. But it's my plan. OK, you can both be in charge. Thank you, Your Majesty. But I'm in charge, really. We need to bury the treasure deep down in the mine. But how do we get inside? The train! Clever Ben! Wait for me! Dwarf Mine, here we come! <laughs> <laughs> wow! How deep is the mine? Deep, very deep. Hold tight, everyone. Oh, no! Whoa! Whoa! with all the dwarves around. I know. I'm good at voices. This is the dwarf boss. Come on, lads. Let's go, go, go. That's brilliant. Now watch this. All right, boys. Tea break. Tea break. OK, okay boss. <laughs> well done, Nanny Plum. No probs. Right, let's hide this treasure. Quickly now, dwarves never stop digging for long. Here they come! Gold! I found gold! There we go. Diamonds! There's diamonds here! Have we found treasure? Yes! And lots of it! Well done, lads! Keep digging! Eh? What do you mean, keep digging? In case there's more treasure, of course. We always dig twice as hard when we find treasure. Oh, no! What are you doing here anyway? This is the dwarf-only area. We put the treasure there for you to find. What? We thought you'd stop digging. We thought you'd be happy. Why, how thoughtful of you. And we thought you'd stop making that racket. Well, I suppose all the noise could be a bit upsetting. Yes, yes it is. And that's why we apologise in advance. Come on, lads, let's get digging. But, but... Ugh, all this digging has made me quite tired. <sighs> me too, boss. <sighs> <sighs> I think they're going to sleep. Yes, they've tired themselves out. Night, night, boss. Night, night, lads. Good. Now they'll sleep for years. They'll sleep and sleep and sleep and sleep. And then they'll wake up and start digging all over again. Yes. They'll dig and dig and dig and dig and dig.